Hello and welcome to the big show. <laughs> <laughs> name a souvenir people collect that has a city's name on it. Coins, pennies, dimes. No. Um. Euros. Europe. <laughs> you mean like Euro. the sandwiches? <laughs> what? Euros. Oh, name. Answer the. Ask the question again. Name a souvenir people collect that has a city's name on it. Like keychains. No, a city's name on it. Like the name of a city is the name of the product. No, like no, a souvenir. souvenir. Like, like you go out of town. Shot glasses. And uh, you got the city's name on it where you at? Miami. Oh, t shirts. A spoon. That's the number one. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> name oh, on it. they're talking about with the little tips they used to have. Yeah. They used to make. Yeah. <laughs> what is this from the 60s? Some of them. Because my auntie, hey, my great auntie has. <laughs> Name a celebrity from decades ago who's still thought of as a style icon. No idea. It's going to be somebody white. And sporty posh. I mean, sp <laughs> sporty spice. What's the dude that, what's the dude that the Baywatch guy? That nigga ain't never had no clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of his name. <coughs> All right, Marilyn Monroe. Really? I thought y'all would have got. I would have got that. Marilyn Monroe. Name yes, a country that is dead. known for their beer. Name what? Name a country that is known for their beer. Butch, Ireland, <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> that was the smartest and the dumbest answer ever. <laughs> yeah, Ireland's number two. Mm. We get that. Oh. There's still a number one answer out there. <laughs> United States. Germany's the number one answer. Yeah. Name a reason why a man yeah. might seem too immature to date. He too plays video games. He plays sports. No. He plays games. Y'all never gonna get this. They say he's a younger man. <laughs> oh. Name something you try to get rid of that always seems to come back. Exes. That's a good answer, <laughs> that but no. That great. Acne. Oh, that's pretty good. Pimple, so yeah. They, they won't leave me alone. <laughs> well, being dark skin. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> right. Unlike Honey Bun, name a breakfast food that doesn't make a good pet name. Cinnamon Road. Donut. <laughs> Muffin. <laughs> Pancakes. That's actually a great pet name. Pancakes. It's just Cinnamon Roll. <laughs> Cereal. Cereal. Two zip. Not only is he playing offense, he's playing defense. <laughs> Other than a bar, name a place where it's common to get hit on. Church, school, work. School and work is it actually has a slash in between them. <laughs> oh, it, that was the yeah. answer. Oh, yeah, yeah, I both was about of them. Say, pretty cool it was work. <laughs> name an animal with a terrifying bite. Lion. <laughs> Bear. <laughs> a bit. Tiger. A pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good one. All black people will <laughs> take that. Snake. Blue. Snake. A terrifying bite? Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, you got bit <laughs> by a snake, nigga. You don't just say shit yesterday. I got bit by a snake, nigga. I ain't never heard a nigga say them words. Or you breathe. <laughs> <laughs> nigga just start running if you say that shit. <laughs> snake. Fuck that. <laughs> Name something a family uses in their home a robot family would need. A broom. <laughs> a shower, a bathtub. No. Name something you use in your home. It is set up wrong. <laughs> Name How would you something. Say of, it? What would a regular family have in their home that a robot family wouldn't? <laughs> a stove, a kitchen. Man, where are they gonna eat? A table. Food was enough. <laughs> eat. Okay, daddy. Yeah, you asked me a question with it. I was like, ooh, so close. If you lived on Sesame Street, which character would get on your nerves? Oscar. Cookie Monster. Elmo. <laughs> Big Bird. I'm about to say, who the fuck would have a problem with Elmo? <laughs> who would have a problem with Big Bird? Nobody, but I wouldn't have no problem with Elmo. <laughs> Four one Cortez. That's it. That's good. No, you gotta have one. I was gonna say, no, we can get <laughs> I was gonna say we can get <laughs> Why might someone's phone number be unlisted? Uh, Private? They don't want nobody to know. Stalker. 
privacy. He got them all. Oh. <laughs> he said private. Listen, I'm, I'm with it. Let's roll. <laughs> See, I tried to warn Bianca up before Listen, the game, but girl. she just uh, just did like random hits. We played some karaoke. <laughs> Listen, yes, we did. And um, after that, I'm, I'm pretty much done. I'm out. <laughs> What up, everybody, and welcome to Urban Absurdity. I'm your host, Bianca Brown. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That is OG Rowan. <laughs> and I'm still goddamn Cortez. I don't understand. I don't get to be nobody else. Need to have nobody's name to take. It's only three of us. <laughs> before, before we begin you gotta the show, be you. Before, we wanna, before we begin the show, I just want to shout out Ryan, the second week in a row, to come to work with his slick back. Hey, I didn't even notice. I don't it. understand how this nigga just keep coming to work like this. And don't think we ain't gonna take the time out to figure this shit out. Hey, bro. I didn't even all this whole time I've been here <laughs> waiting for light skin to pull up. And look at this shit. I didn't notice. Hey, look, I've been working a lot. Nobody's come by. I couldn't get a, a shave. I couldn't get a hair break. I just been staying at work. Like people don't care there. Everybody looks like just Yo. about the same. The thing that gets me though is that he got grays all up and in his beard. Not one single gray up there, man. Not Weird. one single gray to see back. Weird. That is the craziest thing. Well, let's, thing of- well, let's ask. <laughs> let's ask the question. What I don't think ask gray the is like- in the room. Ron, do you dye your hair? No. Ron is in the mirror. Question. We gotta ask this question. Ron, how I would get my beard one- first. How you not have not one gray, bro? <laughs> you got even grays in your nose, eyebrows. <laughs> Arms, not one in the slick back. You're making me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't see any. This is. Hey, y'all, thanks for checking us out. It's been a great episode. <laughs> this we are out of here. I'm paying attention now. Not one in there. Let room. me see if there's an answer. Like, what does that mean? Hey, you know what? Since he mentioned that, I'll tell you something. Cortez, you're going to have to deal with it when you get older. Mm-hmm. Nose hairs. <laughs> I just had my that shit is going to come and it's going to be there. They got that stuff you put in it and then they pull it out. I don't want my nose hairs to be yanked out. I want you to carefully cut them. You know, if I was a barber, I'd have a problem with sticking my clippers up a nigga's nose. My barber just did me like that. <laughs> and you feel that. violated the first time. Like, bro, this nigga all in my <laughs> nose. But I guess it's part of the cut. Right, right. You got to get me in. You got to get me <laughs> Got to get me right. I'm fucking leave out. You ain't get no cut. Look at your nose, nigga. God <laughs> damn. <laughs> what is she saying on there? Ryan is a phenomenon. What is she looking up? She's trying to figure out how you can have gray hair everywhere else except for <laughs> on your head. Huh? I'm surprised. Hey. It says the answer is simple. The beard hair grows faster. It seems strange, but going gray is the result. <laughs> is a depletion of pi- of pigments in your hair follicles. Mm. You know mm-hmm. what? I just realized while I'm talking shit. I don't think I got any gray hairs on my head, but I got gray <gasps> hairs on my you beard too. You do, nigga. And you just I don't have gray, a lot. You got yet. gray hairs on my head. Let me see. Mm-hmm. No. no, I don't see them in your hair. It is kind of weird. It's always the last to come. I think. Yeah, my hair about to start falling down. It looks like that's what it. Yeah, that's why the beard hair grows faster, and then you cut it more. You mess yep. with it more. I can see that. Okay, so the answer. Look, <laughs> thanks, Google. Man, let's dive right up into this shit. Hit what with, we got? Hit, hit them with what we supposed to be hitting them with. Man, hit I... them with that heat that you was talking about all day up for a week or two. What was I talking about? Just what, how you say his name? <laughs> Empire. Jesse they... Smollett. Yeah, yeah. Let's go into that because the I nigga was, was lying. <laughs> I've been for the nigga, man, and he disappointed me. That's why I don't watch Empire. All of them thugs, <laughs> all them fucking thugs, ain't nothing but goddamn pranksters. Yo, yo, yo! <laughs> tell them this story, Ryan. All right. If no, if nobody has heard of this story, you've been under a rock or something for the past few weeks. Jesse Smollett was in Chicago for a performance. I don't know what he does on the side. Like, is he a singer? Yeah, he, he is sings. a singer. Yeah. He's saying, okay. He was coming from a performance and he was walking out of a building, and according to him, he was attacked by two white men. They were yelling and wearing Make America Great Again apparel, Mm -hmm. which can not be found. Don't buy that shit. But (laughs) it was just a like all the components of the story was I was on my phone for the whole 60 second attack. Mm -hmm. It was two people that were yelling Empire first to get my attention. And they started yelling Make America Great Again, blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on. 
He didn't cooperate with the police. The police started the investigation. He didn't want to turn up his phone, blah, blah, blah. It comes out today. TMZ released it. And a lot of other publications that now. Damn TMZ. TMZ will get you caught up. TMZ will fuck up your life. They showed these two buffed ass black brothers. Yes, <laughs> yes, they were. And thank God for their release. <laughs> it is just crazy how they're locking black men up. <laughs> yeah, what's crazy is he paid these big motherfuckers to beat them up. The big, thick motherfuckers, too. I mean. And Cortez wanted to talk about it first, so I'm going to let him go in on it. How so, do you feel about it? I feel. Violated, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like as soon as he had said it, I was ready to riot. I said, "Motherfucking mega people!" <laughs> out here, mad job, mega, whatever they call him. Y'all up here trying to fuck over my guy like that? <laughs> Hell no. Nah, he the best one out of the Empire kids. Like you gonna try to fuck up? Excuse me, my guy like that? Oh, we rioting. Then Ryan, I want to know why though. Then Ryan gonna tell me last week that. He smells something fishy. And I said, nigga, I dare you. And this nigga was right. The story just didn't sound right. And why? And all right, if they said they had camera footage, how how did you not see these two big? But they did say they saw two homeless people in the area. Like maybe he had them like disguised as homeless people or something like that. But they why? never said they saw any white people, no red hats, anything. They said the reason why they think he did it is because he was about to get booted off of uh, Empire. Mm-hmm. So anybody, everybody knows the more attraction you get in public, the more they want to write you into the script, right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to like people that do sex tapes, right? Like what was that girl named? Uh, Mimi. Mimi off of uh, Love and Hip Hop. Mm-hmm. She had did the whole shy Ride scene and everybody was like, oh my gosh, like how did this get out? And she was the own empire. I'm on hip hop talking about uh, somebody stole his bag and they got out <laughs> that way or whatever. And I'm looking at the I'm looking at the film. Remind you, I'm looking at the film with Mimi in it. And I'm like, this is professionally done. It wasn't like yeah. the nigga was holding up the camera, you know, the whole time. It was like somebody was moving with the camera. And I'm like, this don't make any sense. Then two seasons later, it comes out that they did this shit for money. You know what I mean? They put it out themselves and leaked it themselves and shit. All for the bread, bro. They First of all, they didn't form. install that fucking shower curtain. That motherfucker was professionally installed. <laughs> right. It wasn't one of the ones you go, you know how you twist it, you right. get it tight, you pull on it a couple times, like, yeah, that's cool. Right. In order to, to support the weight of a human woman, come on, man. that yeah, motherfucker that is not a regular, that ain't no $19 rod. Yeah, right. It was a, <laughs> it was a cool little uh, flick, but it was boring as hell. She's old. It was old. But that, that, that just brings me to my point where... Once she had did it, now the whole Love and Hip Hop series was about trying to figure out if she was lying or not. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So even though that was a reality show, Empire, now we want to see him make it. You know what I mean? Like if it really, if that's what really happened, mm-hmm. we want to we want to see him overcome that. You know what I mean? And that's come awards and everything like that, like bravery and shit. And that's what I think he was trying to go for, trying to just make sure he stayed relevant. And I didn't think he wrote it like wrote it. I don't think he planned it right. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you're not going to become a hero by getting beat the fuck up. Like, <laughs> if you want to stage something, like maybe you come out as the hero. Old lady walking down the street, even a dude. You know what I mean? You come, you foil the robbery or something like that. What better way, but though, he, if you gay? Like, he has a whole community uh, behind him. okay, yeah, right. A right. whole community. The only thing they got to hear is one they own is knocked down. The only thing they got to do is hear hate crime and everybody's all of a sudden sympathetic to Then you got a lot of black people. Call. You got a black people. All of them are now, like, sympathetic to him as well. Mm-hmm. So you got two big cultures trying to root for you. You know what I mean? He was trying to get his bread. I think it failed on him. He won't he give up that phone. Up though. Now, now what does he do? Where does he go? Man, Especially... Right now, they're saying that it's all, like, they haven't charged him with anything, but when they actually charge him, then it'll be basically out there, like, okay, you lied. Man, they're going to charge him in Chicago. They make sure they pick up R. Kelly ass right along with him. (laughs) Yes, I brought R. Kelly back in this conversation. Deflect. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm deflecting. Bianca, before we move on, because R. Kelly is back in the news, (laughs) how do you feel about this smollet? It. That's a weird last name. He sound like a lion. How do you like feel about lie. the situation? The smallets. I'm just trying to figure out the brothers. If Abel Show seems to be working on his abs and Ola, the other brother, seems to be working on his chest. And if they work out together, why don't they work on both? You're stupid. <sighs> Questions we'll never know the answers to. Listen. 
Bianca wants to be their oil girl. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, they do need some. The other, the other picture looked ashy. Mm-hmm. Do I feel okay? First of all, he's he's innocent until proven guilty. Mm-hmm. Because every, yeah, we got to put that out because, there. Because because every other culture loves to use that too. I'm gonna use that for us. Innocent until proven guilty. However, about mm-hmm. these accusations, accusations. If it if they are true, it sucks because not only will he make or does it make black people look bad, like we blame them for everything. Mm-hmm. Like, see, if this is false. A lot of other people could have made some false claims that y'all believe. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that fucks up black people. Then for for gay people, it messes them up because then it's like, well, how many of y'all have lied about certain incidents that supposedly happened that didn't just to get some attention? You know what I mean? So you kind of fucked with two people, mm-hmm. two groups of people just to like benefit whatever the fuck you got going on. And I don't know if he was about to get booted off empire. I don't know. All I know is it's, it's a s- stupid reason to fuck up to like, don't fuck us up. Don't fuck us up. However, I will say this. He did make a false allegation. That was true. But do they arrest women or even men who say they were raped? And then it comes out that they were not raped. Do they arrest them? Rarely. Rarely. They should. I think they should. Because so, in a lot of cases of people going to jail for like long amounts and of have, time. And, or do, actually do time until they find out that that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So in those cases, they don't go to jail. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'm not trying to say it's cool to lay false claims. It is not. It's not. But, no, it's terrible because you know what? And I got to say this while I remember. You know I'm old. So I got to say this now. The fucked up part when someone says that I was raped. When those people go to jail and then all of a sudden they come out, because it it doesn't go right to the news. They don't hold a press conference to say, okay, I lied. If if their conscience fucks with them and they go, they'll go back to the police. And the police and the judges and the lawyers and the prosecutors are so fucking embarrassed over their fuck-ups too because they feel that they should have had more common sense to go with that story. Mm -hmm. They will fucking say, okay, you know what? It don't matter now. Yeah, he's, he's so already they, in there. Yeah, he's yeah. already in there. And that's the fucked up part about it because they don't want to look bad. If you're a fucking DA, somebody comes and says, hey, look, you don't, look, you didn't fuck up. You're not the person that fucking laid the claims down. Yeah. Let these fucking people out of jail. There's a lot of that shit going on. But I bet you they would admit the truth if they could arrest the person. If they did arrest the person that made the false claim, mm-hmm. I bet you they would because it's like, well, we believed in what you said and the evidence that you gave us. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. somebody got to somebody got to do this time for whatever's yeah. going on. But when they it might well be your ass since you lying right. and shit. But when they don't, it's like, oh, well, let's just you know this shit's done already happened. So I'm pretty sure there's some prosecutors that know a lot of shit that didn't really fucking happen, mm-hmm. and they're still like, mm, well, you know, it's too late. It's ten years. He been in there. Yeah. Why or she? Because a lot of women go to jail off false shit too. Like they've been in there, so why mm-hmm. change what's going on? Man, and I hate bringing up race with this type of shit, but I got to bring up this one story I saw today. I didn't even read because it made me so pissed off. It was from a reputable news site, though a big uh, a big um, news source, and, and they basically said it was this white security officer at a police at a uh, at a school, and he received oral sex from one of the students. He got convicted of it. But they said, you don't have to register as a sex offender. Yeah, I seen that too. And I was, like, when I, that's why I didn't read it. Because when you basically get the whole, I mean, the gist of it, like, it captioned it well. Like, basically, okay, you're letting them off. You know what I mean? Because you're supposed to register. Okay, they say, all right, he's not going to jail. But you don't have to register as a sex offender. That means that you can work at another school. Right. But had that been a black person, you would never fucking work at any school ever. You can't even come within a thousand feet of that motherfucker. If, if somebody's taking you to work, you got to drive around that school because you can't even be in the zone. Right. I hate that shit. It, like, it really pissed me off. I think what... <clears throat> I'm not even surprised anymore. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it hurts for me not to even be surprised anymore. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, what the fuck do we even do with this information? Mm-hmm. Like, we've been... Faced with this information so many times. Like, what do we fucking do with this information? Mm. Nothing. It's like it's a slap Get in the mad. face. Like, not saying that all of us are criminals, but even somebody who's, 
who I'm not out here doing shit. When you see that, it's like, fuck. Because there's a lot of people who are registered sex offenders over bullshit. Trust me. Nobody's condoning any of that shit. But I'm saying there's a lot of people who are registered sex offenders over bullshit. Some people, I've seen stories where the people were the same age. Yeah, it's so <laughs> weird, man. Like that shit. What if both were underage and now this black kid is a sex offender? Like he was 16 and one was 15, you know what I mean? And now he's a sex offender for the rest of his life. Don't do it. And now this fucking person in his 30s, you got fucking oral sex from a fucking 17-year-old, and you don't have to register. And this is not even me being racist, because I'm the last racist person. I talk a lot of racial shit, but I'm, I'm not racist at all. I love everybody. But... Think oh, about I know, this. I know. I know. I know. This. I know. This is gonna. I mean, like every race. I don't. <laughs> I don't dislike a race for some reason. Oh, I feel know. that. Yeah. So, <laughs> Bianca said, "Nah, she hates some races." <laughs> I'm gonna let you get into that afterwards. Yeah, right. Cause she like she got the Oprah on her mind. She got that Oprah look, like mm-hmm. got that mink ball on her head. Yeah. She's feeling. She's feeling pretty. To, I, got, I got some shit I gotta say. I wish I had Oprah money. <laughs> but uh, but um, you think about this, right? Say that we ran the world like black people. And this is how this. I is thought how, you meant us three. I was about to say, let's <laughs> get into this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, right. So that so that black people were in the world, right? And some shit like this happens. Mm-hmm. We're gonna more than likely try to protect our own to give them another shot or something, right? Like we, it, it may not be this particular thing, but maybe I don't know. Slick back, not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe slick back. Well, you had to throw that I in. I know, right? I was trying <laughs> to think of a name. <laughs> I was just about to say that. God damn it. So slick back is out here, you know, pimping bitches. You know what I mean? You out here pimping these bitches, man. And, you know, we find out about it. You know, and we like, man, these bitches out here letting this nigga pimp him. We know the goddamn pimping game. We're going to be like, instead of Ryan going to jail for sex trafficking, we're going to throw a little... You know, a, a little misdemeanor his way, <laughs> and we'll let this nigga walk, right? Because we know the pimp game. You know what I mean? We know these hoes is out here choosing. You know, <laughs> not said everybody. I'm just saying that nigga going to jail. You sound a real right. pimp show, right? You, you know, I watched a couple of HBO specials. So <laughs> anyway, we know the pimp game. <laughs> so we can slap you on the wrist, right? And I think that's what a lot of white people are doing, but I don't think they understand that. No matter who it may be, even if it's your own kind, wrong is wrong. Yeah. Wrong is fucking wrong. Like, you can't tell me. That's why I didn't understand, like, when I talk to y'all about R. Kelly pissing on young, younger age girls, you know, 14 yeah. or whatever, and we talk about, like, do we still love his music? No, nigga, I'm not bumping. I may still, I may like it, but I can't love it no more, man. Like, I can't play it at the picnics. Exactly how I feel about right. it. I can't play at the picnics. I can't do none of that shit no mm-hmm. more, man. So when you say, like, wrong is wrong, no matter who it may be, you got to cut them the fuck off. So if that's your people's and he did something fucking wrong, white people, you got them. To, you got to cut it the fuck off because it could have been your daughter or your son. Exactly. And if you don't see that, then you don't really care about nobody except for yourself. Exactly. And that's some selfish shit. I agree with that. But if they pimping, though. <laughs> I can understand. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. We're about to get off of the pimp so we can bring this up. You <laughs> speak about R. Kelly. There have been mention of there's a new tape. There's a new R. Kelly tape. Mm-hmm. Uh, some prosecutor has it. I don't know why he's holding it. I don't know if there's about to be a trial, some kind of oh, criminal investigation. Shit. But what? Okay, right now, people can justify the first tape, however, in their sick mind, why you can justify it. I, I can't. You sick bastard. Yeah, but people still say, okay, blah, blah, blah. They come up with anything. But now there's an actual, like, that wasn't a sex tape. They're saying that this is a sex tape with a new 14-year-old girl. No, There's no mention on how old the tape is, how old the woman is now. But, like, what happens now? Like, if you didn't mute R. Kelly at first, now shouldn't it be the time? Yep. If that tape is revealed and he's doing what he's being accused of doing again, should we just, like, no more um, I like your music but I don't love it. No more when it comes on, I don't just change it because it's on random. It's just going to be one. I might not hear no more. You know what I mean? All the excuses people use about listening to his music now. Mm-hmm. Should we kick this nigga out of the musical Rotation, bro. like okay, you're you're a musical genius, but bro, you can't stop fucking babies. Like right, right. eventually, we have to say, like, look, it's over, it's done. Yeah, I'm with you. 
Bro, like, I, I'm with you 100%, bro. Like, I try to tell my people that, and they were just so mad. <laughs> my people were so mad How about two step, nigga. Look, nigga. There's <laughs> they was other like, music. <laughs> they, was like, they was like, why do we got to hate his music? Because he did something that don't have to do with nothing with music. And I was like, is y'all crazy? Like, you, like my uncle, he a pastor. I'm like, uncle, like, if one of your crew members, one of the pool pit members did something foul, mm-hmm. even though they was a good Samaritan, good member, they do something foul. You got to kick them out. Like, that's what you have to do. So you can't tell me you can kick out your assistant pastor for doing something foul, mm-hmm. but you can't stop listening to R. Kelly for raping motherfuckers? <laughs> for just you raping should, them? You should immediately... Nobody's music should be higher than the crime that they committed. Right. Nobody's. Like, first of all, you already know when it comes to rap, it ain't nobody. Like, I don't give a fuck how good you rap. If you do something, you immediately, like, nobody's fucking with you. You're not hot no more. Mm-hmm. But with these singers, it's like, some about R&B. Some about R&B. <laughs> like, some about these fucking wonderful baby-making music producers. We can't stop listening to you. We have to fuck listening to R. Kelly. We have to fuck listening to so-and-so. Right. Like, why? Here's the problem. I, I'm going to tell you why. Because... There's an elephant in the room. No one wants to pay attention to it. I say it all the time. People disagree because it's involving black women. I don't give a fuck what nobody say because it's involving black women. It don't matter. It it don't even listen. It don't even worry about it. It doesn't even matter how old they are. If I hear another motherfucker say that a 14 year old should have known better. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. you. Why do they say that? Fuck you. Like a 14 year old. Listen, do we all know? When we were younger, we all knew better, too. We still got in trouble. We still did shit. No one can say they did absolutely fucking nothing Mm -hmm. that the situation could have been worse. Mm -hmm. If if I'm older, if I have a kid around me, I know I can basically control this kid. You're a kid. But in a positive way, because, of course, that's what type of people we are. Mm -hmm. So that means if a person wanted to control them in a negative way, they fucking could. Mm -hmm. They fucking could. We see, and I, I said this before and I'm going to say it again. We see young black boys get into the system because they see the flash of, of what they could possibly do if they, you know, get in the streets. Mm. So they do it. And then when they get a little older, we say we should forgive them because they didn't know what they were fucking doing. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to young black girls, it's like, ah, she was just being fast. Or, ah, she was, get your fucking people. Get your mm. people. That's what you need to do. Stop just blaming. And I'm not trying to say that the kids don't don't need to be corrected because they do. However, you are a grown fucking adult. There is no fucking excuse. When I saw that picture, and that's the reason why I fucking watched it. Because in my head, I'm thinking this 14-year-old girl that was in the video had to look like had to look like she was older. Yeah. She looked like a fucking kid. She looks right. like a damn kid. She looked 14. She the the one that was in it when he was taking pictures of, of uh with her in the basketball game, she looked like she was fucking ten. Mm. And some of them pictures were when she was younger. Mm. She looked like a goddamn kid. So you can't say all these girls are just being fast or all these girls just doing this. Am I saying that you need to correct your kids? Yes, you do. But when people say, "Well, where the mom at? Where the fucking daddy at?" Stop just always saying, "Where's the fucking mother?" Sometimes you know what? My mom had to go to work. It was up to me to do the right thing. Yeah. My mom worked her ass off. Friends of mine, their parents worked their fucking ass off. Mm -hmm. They wasn't always there to take them to school or always there when they got off fucking work. Parents have to fucking work. We just, we live in that type of environment where we don't get the enjoyment of saying, my mom's a stay at home mom. Yeah. Or my, my dad, he's that, you know, he's always, it doesn't always happen like that in those situations. And when you got a person who could play off that type of fucking situation, because mm-hmm. you tell them because you're young, you don't know, mm-hmm. you give them this information and they say, oh, I'm going to use this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use this to get your fucking ass. And that's exactly what he fucking did. And the fucked up part and the way I look at this shit is that, and yes, it's the parents' responsibility, um, sons, daughters. All of them are supposed to be raised the correct way. I just think, too, we're living in a time where kids are just overly sexualized. It's like when you see, like, even an artist, like, and this is how, like, the sad part about it is entertainment kind of um, has a huge influence on people. 
Right. Especially kids. Like when you see a 15 year old artist, and some of them are, are promoted the right way. She's 15 years old. She looks 15. She's dressed 15. Mm hmm. But a lot of the kids, the teenagers, these groups and shit, like you see them and they're fucking dressed in an inappropriate manner. Not excusing anything, but it's almost like that set up to say, so when things like this happen, then all of a sudden you can question where was the child's mind at. You're not supposed to be questioning where the fuck the child's mind is. Exactly. You're supposed to be questioning the fucking 50-year-old or the 40-year-old or however old the person is. And I... Dude, I just don't. And even with, even with kids, even with males, even even the younger males, they come out and they're making sex songs. Your first song as a sixteen year old should not be. Can you? What was that song I heard on the radio the other day? Can you drive this stick shift? Can you mm -hmm. ride it? Can I bang it out? That's not. That's not the way it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel that you can make 15, 16 year old music, then wait till you get older. Yep. You can bang it out as long as you want to. You can drive. You can. To offer your stick shift to be driven You're stupid. as much as you want. But that's the part that I hate about it is because people get the perception when everything's all good that, okay, it's okay for these youngsters to be, to have sexually charged lyrics and live sexually and just be sexually independent as a youngster. It's like, that's not cool. It's like, we don't look at kids like we look, like we used to look at kids now. Well, I'm older, so that's how I see it. Like with social media, people have seen youngsters acting as adults for a long time. We it, we do that now. Like yeah. I don't I don't know if anybody if y'all pay attention, but I do, and I don't give a fuck if some people get pissed off at me. I ain't saying no names, but if you feel like this is you, this is you. <laughs> Let's piss them off. I see plenty of people on Facebook who have kids, right? <coughs> and you could tell the kid that they favor the most as far as looks go. Mm -hmm. Because they'll post this kid all the time. Especially if it's a girl. They post her mm. all the time. And they'll post her like she's sexy. Or mm. she's I've I've never been cool with that that word when it comes to kids. I don't give a fuck even about babies. babies. When they be like, oh my little my little sexy fat man. Shit's dude, words mean things. I say this all the time. Words mean things, motherfuckers. If y'all don't know what the fuck they mean, they're dictionaries. And guess what, people? You don't even have to fucking open up a book. You can get it right on your phone. Words mean things. Stop calling these babies sexy. Stop calling y'all 15 and 16 year old. They're fucking kids. Why the fuck would you do that? I don't get that. I see people do that shit. And I'm like, you basically pushing your kid out there. Because mm -hmm. cause then you want to post ah, all these niggas. All these niggas I see. I went on my daughter's page and I see all these, these people on my daughter's page. These grown men. What the fuck? That's because you advertising them. And I'm not trying to say don't be proud of your kids, but there's certain ways people know. There's certain ways on how you doing that shit, and you maybe you Watch don't know. Watch what pictures are you putting out there on your of of your kids? Right. Like I don't understand. Like if he pictures, I be thinking like, why you think that's okay? I seen a picture of this girl. She had posted her son. He was like 15, 16 years old. He throwing up gang signs and shit. And she just like he's so crazy. Like I love my son. Like no, your son is. <laughs> Like you don't want to. Some will get shot yeah, tonight. Like you can promote those images. You can't shit. do that, ma'am. Like you gotta. You can't be like my son's crazy and funny because he's throwing up these gang signs. No, motherfucker, he may be funny at home, but out in real life, that shit could get him killed. Like you don't know what yes. the fuck he's doing. What's you know crazy what I mean? and funny about that? Like you I know what I mean? I don't like, understand. Like why are you promoting that? I don't seen kids younger than that. I don't seen kids like seven yeah. flipping the camera off and they like, oh look at little, look at little boo boo, look Fake at little gunshots. I I promise you, you know me. It's certain, it's certain shit that I just have to comment on, right? I have to comment on, and I don't even care who it is. It could be my best friend, it could be my mom, it could be a stranger. If I see certain shit, I always comment on it. One of the things I almost, I always comment on is when girls or men post their son fake shooting, right? Like I don't care how old he is, he's fake shooting at the camera. Like yeah. why is that cool? Like you got your son, you know, like pow pow, like at the camera, like. You raising that nigga the wrong way. Exactly. Like you You're making nigga. it seem cool. And that's not even cool. And every time somebody does it, I always comment on it like, that shit ain't cool. Don't be having your son right. pointing. That's not sending the right message. And they always say the same shit. Raise your kids. I'm going to raise mine. I'm like, but we a community, man. Like, if, yeah. I, don't, if I don't check you, who, who will? Like, that's not okay. We're not always, always check people that get into beefs online. Like, if I see it. And, it, and I always see people talking about I'm about to pull up and I'm about to handle whatever. Like, I always come in and be like, are y'all serious? Like, y'all really good at it? 
over a dumbass comment. Like the last time I did it, it was this girl getting into it with the other girl because the girl had called her grandma, her dead grandma, ugly. And I was like, I understand how wow. sensitive your grandma could be, right? <laughs> and I know you got a grandma, and I know you got a granny that passed away, right? Mm -hmm. And I and I and I may be selfish by even saying this, right? Because I don't have a granny that passed away, but I got grandparents that have passed away. Yeah. But logically, grandma already gone. Like grandma feelings is not gonna get hurt. You know what I mean? Like me, you calling my grandma ugly because she's dead is not gonna hurt my feelings because my grandma can't feel those feelings. So I'm not gonna be mad about that. I might come looking for it. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, apologize. I apologize. I might come. No, it doesn't hurt because, like you said, you said nah. your opinion. But I might come looking for you. Yeah. That's only because, like, my wounds haven't healed yet. Okay. I'm one of those people. You know how when somebody dies, people like, and these are probably strong people. Like, and I can respect the words that they say. But when they say that time heals all wounds, all, not all of them. Yeah, I can understand because that. because I'm a mama's boy. I, I was always a mama's and grandma's boy. Yeah. So my grandma left. It was like I would love for her advice. Like I would love to call her right now. I would love to hear some of the things because I did things after she passed away that she didn't get to see. Mm -hmm. And I I really think about like every day when I wake up, like I think about that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's why like I'm always the silly person. I'm always saying like funny shit because that's just a way to mask like – like, I be wanting to break that. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Like, right, every day, right. like, people feel like that's the weak route, but it's not. Like but who, it's, who feels like we got to talk about that, too? Oh, Jesus, you just brought something up. Thank you, thank you. Because we uh, got we we in church. We, no, we definitely have to. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand this reason why people do that. But to, to I guess, my rebuttal to that. I feel, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to pull up. For that, for that reason, and I'll say this only because when when you let somebody know like what the fuck you saying is moving them, I'm telling you like I'll get mad at some shit. I will, y'all know, <laughs> I get mad at some shit, but I can't let motherfuckers know what they saying move me. Like yeah, especially especially if you're not even fucking worse my motherfucking time. Like I'm not about to be with somebody online. Like mm -hmm. that's that's for everybody else. When you see bitches arguing online, that's for everybody else. At the time that y'all had to fucking argue, y'all could have been the fault. Yeah, that's true too. And and then with a the left, there there should be no fucking conversation. If I got to keep going back and forth with you, that's a production for everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's not the, and it's not even gonna fucking. I'm happen. not beefing with them online. If some motherfucker was to disrespect my grandma like that online, I might not even respond back. Right, but I'm gonna make a few calls. Somebody know where he at. But see what I'm. I'm pulling the fuck up. I, I, I guess, changed what I, I said. I, and <laughs> but nobody's saying that you need to. I'm just I'm saying from from my standpoint because point blank period. A lot of motherfuckers, especially especially if I want to make it big, a lot of motherfuckers are going to say shit. I look at, like, look what Cardi B going through. Niggas, if you go to that her IG page, niggas are on her motherfucking head. Right. But they but they do that to, to a lot of superstars, too. Like, people are going to be on their head. Motherfuckers mm -hmm. are always going to say shit. You always going to say something. Like, if it's a legitimate reason, again, I'm not about to sit up here and fucking argue. I get what you're saying by jumping on people's stuff and, like, saying, like, mm -hmm. well, this is really stupid. Because mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, what the fuck you fighting over is exactly. really fucking. The main root of the fucking problem is really fucking stupid. Right. But y'all just going back and forth with each other, which is, is dumb. I just hate because you, you hear about it. You heard about it all last year. If you if you in this community or around here in Kansas City, Kansas City, Missouri, mm -hmm. like you heard about it all last year, like the girl, she went and tried to fight somebody late at night and she got shot and yeah. she died. Mm -hmm. Like, are you kidding me? Then you got other dudes that had a triple murder last year. Like mm -hmm. this shit is real just because you're trying to pull up and prove a point offline. Mm -hmm. Like you got to be kidding me. Like I don't want my people dying because something so simple as them calling your grandma ugly where you can really shake that shit off. Can you imagine though, like? Mm -hmm. You know, I know how sensitive you are about your grandmother, but can you imagine, and I'm talking to Ron, can you imagine you've been in the hospital mm -hmm. and they like, damn, like, what happened to you, bro? He was like, I had to check a motherfucker for calling my grandma ugly. <laughs> You're like, nigga, you about to die because they called your grandma ugly? I right, but see, this is the thing. And That's some scary shit. I'm not, all right, I said that I would pull up. I'm not condoning the fact that I might <laughs> pull up and fuck somebody up because that's not everybody's, that's not everybody's way. But a lot of these people who get fucked up, are the people who on there entertaining two day arguments talking about I'm pulling up, I'm pulling up, I'm pulling up, now this nigga ready for you to pull up. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, if a person and like Bianca brought up celebrity status, when you get to that point, nah. Yeah, you should it, just 
you know what I mean, it's zero. But like when you don't know me and you came on this post and you like got disrespectful and shit like that, like I'm gonna surprise you. You're not gonna know I'm I'm pulling up. Like all right, let's just say if it was you. Like, let's just say you the one got on there and said something. Mm -hmm. Like, we on Facebook, like, people know where you work. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, I, I ain't telling motherfuckers, yeah, all right. I, I post all your right. address, nigga. I'll pull up. Then you post your address. He got six niggas waiting on you. Right. You know when you're pulling up. Right. No, I'm going to come to T-Mobile. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Be right there, dude. I, you know what I mean? I'm going to come to Gates. I'm going to come to wherever the fuck you working right. at, and then I'm going to handle that. But, like, all right, all right, let's get into Cardi B. I want to, I want to, uh, uh, the, uh, the celebrity aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm by no means a celebrity, but I was laughing. And you know what? Slowly I learned because, yes, I I, I expect to be in that position, all of us, because we're on the show. We're going to rise together. Mm -hmm. Like, I made the post yesterday, the little uh, the little viral trend about people talking on phones, like, in weird places and shit like that, when I posted it. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, I saw, I saw a few comments, and, like, the old me would have argued with certain people, but it's like, no. I want that attention. I want you to talk shit like motherfuckers say, oh, this motherfucker at, at a car lot waiting on the bus because it was a, you know what I mean, my car, I was in front of my car. I don't even know what the fuck they be talking about. Yeah, there's <laughs> all kinds of weird shit. Like the five year ago, me, I'd have been arguing with him for two days. And then, yeah. and, and then this woman said, oh, that looked like the Bow Wow challenge to me. But the only thing I thought in my head was that, like, these are miserable people. Like, first of all, like, I had that car for two and a half years. I don't even want that motherfucker no more. That motherfucker's not a prize. Like, I want something new now. Like, motherfuckers just immediately, like, throw. And, and when you don't know them, like, that's on a like page. That's not a personal page. You know what I mean? Like, anything you say on there, like, I can look past it. Like, because I know why people post stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because they going through something or they want to get a rise out of you. And I'm not going to give you a rise out of me because I don't know you. Like, really, I don't know you. You're not a friend of a friend. You don't. You haven't seen me for years and say, okay, this is the way to get him. It's like mm -hmm. Cardi B should, and, and sometimes she claps back. You know, you've seen some, some supreme clapbacks when it comes to celebrities. Yep. Sometimes it just gets to the point to where, okay, I'm saying some of these motherfuckers. But we don't know them. They're the, in the celebrity status. Those could be people that's always on their motherfucking post. But this was the one was like, okay, you know what? I'm tired of this motherfucker. Yeah. Like we, don't, we never know the track record when we hear about a clapback. Right. You know what I mean? Maybe they said you were at the car a lot because remember you were talking about selling your car after it messed up. He always No, about that was on the like page, though. Oh, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? I and was it, trying to play devil's <laughs> Yeah, it was a work parking lot, so they saw a lot of cars out there. And it was just funny. But, like, when I see that now and I know they don't know me and it's just a point to where they're just followers of the page, I just laugh at it because, like, <laughs> You're going. That's going to come. So I'm getting ready for like you know what I mean things like that. Like okay, it's cool. And that's like I, I'd rather you be talking about me than me have to talk about you. Right. <laughs> and that's and that's, that's what uh, I try to school this guy. His name is Marco Summers. He on uh he's a viral sensation man, right from Kansas City, right from our own backyard, bro. Mm -hmm. He's really blowing up like a million followers within less of a, a year on yeah. Instagram. So if you know him, go follow him. But he has in the hard trouble with. Looking through the comments mm -hmm. and reading what people are saying. Like mm -hmm. the other day, I guess somebody has said the uh, one of the unpopular opinion is that Marco Summers is not funny to them or whatever. Right? Oh, I saw that. It was a chick, right? Yeah, it was a chick. And then everybody from Kansas City kind of blew it up and was just like, everybody always hating. Like she didn't even have to say nothing. Like he didn't ask no fucking questions. And I understand that, right? Yeah. But I had to tell bro, like. And I ain't, I ain't one of his close friends or nothing like that. I just seen him out. You know, I, I know he's young and. He's really close with my other homeboy, so I just pulled him to the side. I was like, "Bro, what you doing is really good, but you gonna have to, you gonna have to let your fans deal with the haters, bro. Like, yeah. even if you feel like they haters, like let your fans deal with that shit. You don't have to deal with none of that shit. Don't even bring that shit up because then they 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 gonna try to feed into that for your attention. Mm -hmm. Like that's exactly what they're gonna do. I remember I was I ain't never been on like this nigga, so I ain't gonna want to even say that. But I remember like you know like. Like when you was talking about like the popularity of Facebook just growing and growing and you couldn't like really stop it because you kept arguing with motherfuckers, right? Exactly. And at some point, I seen my so-called fans, I call them the Sea Hive, they was... <laughs> <laughs> This nigga, <laughs> this <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> they ain't around no more, but they was loyal at the time, man. Some chick would comment, boom, 10 of them. I'm like, God damn. 
Like I didn't have to never say yeah. nothing, and that's what happened with him. Like as soon as that girl posted it, he had said something. But I mean, like Bobby J had said something. He had made a big post going in at the girl. I know uh, Donald Boogie Donald uh, Williams had said something. I mean, like people will handle that shit for you. But I also want to say, whatever you do, motherfuckers is just gonna hate, and motherfuckers gonna have the opinion. Like me and you had an argument the other day or the debate. We were talking about how I thought Kevin Hart was funny and Mike Epps wasn't. Mm-hmm. Like that's and like that's not me saying Mike Epps is trash in his real life. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying his type of comedy is not funny to me. So when people say like Marco Summers is not funny, even though they gave their opinion, it is an opinion. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like I was. I was about to say that maybe I don't. You know, I don't mind being being the the mean one or the and it's not really being mean. Come on with it. Come on. But with I it. think that's kind of crazy when people say something and you automatically think they're hating. Right. Like when you give your opinion, like you hating. Like it's not like a person's not saying congratulations, like that's cool, you doing what you're doing. Right. It's just that everybody likes it. And I'm just saying to it to me, in my opinion, it's not all that great. Yeah. It's like soul food. I don't fucking like soul food. Oh, you got one more goddamn. Oh, you got me fucked cut. up. You got us both <laughs> fucked up. Hey, hey y'all. Yo, Thanks. We be yeah. back next week. We about to whoop her ass. She got us <laughs> fucked up. I'm gonna, Mama's house. Listen, I want to. I want to crawl out because gotta, <laughs> <laughs> like, I told you it was going early. No, no. Hey, that's the thing, though. Let me say this before you finish this. You brought up soul food. If you would have walked, I mm, that might not be the best example. Okay, Marco, he's doing his thing. One point one, like maybe one point two now. Every yeah, day is going yeah. up because I fucks with him. I go to his page. And make sure that I see the new things he's posted. Yep. A lot of the shit that, a lot of the videos that I see, like when I first saw him doing it, I thought it was funny. I thought it was going to get a little annoying because he's always in the same place. And then eventually, eventually people are going to be like, okay, nigga, you play too much. But he's elevated it. He's going Mm -hmm. from city to city. He's doing things here. Where y'all want my characters? Where y'all want this? He's feeding into the people that fucks with him. So, you know what I mean? And I like what he's doing. Mm-hmm. But the only reason why, and no, just because you say that you don't like this comedian or you don't think that what this person is doing is funny to you, mm-hmm. no, that's not hating. Right. Where I think is semi or slightly hating is when you wait until somebody starts to to elevate and everybody's talking about them and then all of a sudden you volunteer your opinion. Like, it's a lot of motherfuckers I don't like. If we were to sit on this show and just name people in KCK and KCMO that we know and you ask me, do I like this person or this person is doing this, do you like that? And I said, no, not really. That's not hating. But if I just come up and be like, you know what, Marco, if I say we're going to have a, a small segment why I don't like Marco's, that's kind of hating because I'm volunteering information. Nobody asked me. But I'm gonna tell you if what, you like this person. But it was a. But it, it was a. Okay, so here's the thing. It was a trend. It was a trend that was going around like Empire. Because I even did one about Mark. Yeah, everybody does one. And yeah, so that that was the one that that person picked. I mean, people can say I was hating on Martin in the after like ninety. I was one of those ooh, people. I know you were. Yeah. And so, I didn't jump on, but since you on that. I was gonna ask you like, when has Martin never worked? When has he not worked for the radio station? Did he have a different job? Yeah, he when he a, got he fired, was the host. he was a, a host, uh, the host of the show. Yeah, yeah well, remember show. when the but radio? But they didn't have like many episodes of that. Like maybe no, he had a couple, uh huh, because he was only at the radio station. They only did it for like two seasons. two years of the show yeah. being on. Then he was and then broke. That, he was he was rock. He, that boy he, was yeah, in that that coat. <laughs> he was in that coat <laughs> for a second. That one episode they couldn't. When he find ran him. off it too. He was being a Muslim with the braids and shit or whatever he was. When he was at the unemployment office too because yep. he was looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. What was her name? He was calling Buff and Boss. Miss, uh, hey, Buff uh, and Boss. <laughs> Myra. What was her name? Myra. Was I ain't coming in. Oh, you want six months vacation? Yep. <laughs> okay. The boy says. Or not get it, but I didn't jump on there. I didn't feel you were hating, but you just felt that like shit was funnier the first two seasons after they painted the apartment in that motherfucker. I'm one of those people. I like all of the Martins, and even some of the episodes. Like before, I don't like the fifth season when they when they got when you seen Gina. We never saw it. them together. Yeah, you was like, ah, something is off about this. This ain't. Everybody right. was like, something. something yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. I good. mean, some of the shows were still hilarious, but. 
Man, mm. I think all the seasons Listen, though. Like if the, I sat there the, and watched all the seasons with you, it's like every episode wasn't stupid, hilarious. Oh yeah. Listen, that that first two, first I don't two give what? a fuck though. Them first two, man, was, it's at least one or two episodes where you didn't just crazy. Them Three or four is fucking heat. hilarious. Three or four. I is just, heat. I'm sorry. I just you know what? Season one ain't even that good to me. See, that motherfucker was good. Season to me. season two, I, like I, was really good. I did. I, I didn't. Season I didn't like one, season one, and season two. They focus more on their relationship. I'm not trying to listen. I'm not trying to say that there there were no funny episodes after the apartment was painted pink. But what but, was it? What, 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 what changed is, though? Besides it, the apartment being painted pink, it, I'm telling it you, it grew to me. The feel of and those are female things too. Uh, I never even noticed the she paint. Was like as soon as he got rid of his radio, and Gina radio came in. Listen, and I didn't really like it. No more. Listen, when he was when he was at the at the radio station, that shit was fucking funny. Even when he used to do introductions, because yeah, he stopped it was doing that funny. shit. The shit funny. was fucking funny. And again, that's just my opinion. Do funny. I still like Martin? I love Martin, but I, that was just my opinion. But I'll go back to to what she said. Yeah. Then we also had to remember something too. People blow up by doing different things, right? Mm -hmm. This is what world we live in. We live in an internet world. So Mm -hmm. if a person knows, if a person really want to fucking get big, controversy sells. Yeah. Yeah. All you got to do is say, take some heat Mm -hmm. and then get people to talking. And then after that. Because it's going to be a group of them. I think she said that for attention. Yeah, it's going to be a group of them that agrees with her. Yeah. And she's going to get a following. Yeah, she might not have been hating, but she knows if you make that. Status now, she know. All right, two years ago, had you made that status, motherfuckers would be like, "Who, uh, who's Marco?" Right. But when right. you make it, when he starts to blow, now all of a sudden you get what happens. People do, screenshotting your shit. Now all of a sudden, everybody's going to her place seeing what she got cracking. But do you think? Do you think? Be, I mean, like, it wouldn't be nothing to hate on if he didn't blow up. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what it said. So exactly. I'm saying, but I'm saying I, didn't, I mean, like, to I, she probably didn't even know that nigga until he started blowing up. So I, I don't understand how this hating. Because you don't know him, or you Man, didn't know thing, him before. Like I can't. I, I, don't, I didn't know Mike Epps until I seen him on TV. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I already knew at that point. Like if he was from Kansas City, mm-hmm. that nigga done blew up. <laughs> yeah, but, exactly. But in my exactly. head, that but nigga we just all started. noticed these people. Like they're from other places. This is the thing why I label it. Like if I was to have to put my judgment on it, I would say she was hating. If she just said it for attention, okay, I could feel that too. But one of the things that and she might have been from Missouri. Marco's from Missouri, right? I think so. So yeah. it so if you see a person making moves trying to get away from this, not even getting away, because not everybody's trying to get on and get away. Trying to get on, feed their family. Some people want to get back to their community. Which are the good people? I love them even more. But if somebody's from your struggle, from your everyday grind, you see these well, you might not see these people all the time, but you find out, okay, this nigga from my neck of the woods. Mm-hmm. Why try to tear them down when they're trying to do what they do? If you don't have any extracurricular talents other than doing whatever you do with your job, right? Then, okay, that's you. You have to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Why tear him down because he's trying to get where he wants to go the way he's doing it? That'll mm-hmm. make him stronger. It will. Okay, okay. I agree with that part, but from her stance, you know it makes you look a little sad. There are going to be a lot of people who say. I don't fucking like y'all podcast. Right. Of course. I don't I don't think it's great. And to me, I, I guess that's just you have the right to feel that way. There's a lot of shit that I don't fucking like. Whether we blow whether we do they say it now or they say it later. Right. There's a lot of fucking shit that I don't like. I'm not trying to say a person like don't get your money or don't get your views or don't get this shit. I just don't like the shit. Like mm-hmm. and, and that's cool. Not everybody is going to. That's what that Ver- bullshit y'all be talking about on that goddamn show. That's, y'all ain't y'all ain't shit. That's what you yeah. think y'all something. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah, ain't shit. <laughs> y'all, y'all got this little fucking podcast. You know what I'm saying? And, and y'all made it. <laughs> y'all ain't made it nowhere. These motherfuckers be on there talking like everybody listening. We don't even, <laughs> we don't even share that shit. Although we listen to it, we don't tell nobody. Hey, that. a funny thing before you finish. I hate to be the person to do this, but this is about the third time. I posted a link on my like page like I always do. And this crazy woman got on there. I made a caption. I post, Of course, I posted it to the Urban Absurdity like page. And I shared it to my page. And I said... Um, Something about check a uh, uh, brand new episode. Check out Urban Absurdity, the best podcast ever. Mm-hmm. And this woman made it her business to come out, and <laughs> this is not the best podcast <laughs> ever. And at first, I didn't see it. It took me a minute to see it, but a couple of other people were on there. They put like these gifts on there, like 
You know what I mean? Like, basically, meaning like, uh, you know what I mean? What is that for? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why? Like, what made you come on this link <laughs> and say that this is not the best podcast ever? And I got on there just being my sarcastic self, like, okay, I don't understand what's going on here. Because when I got there, it was like she had a couple of comments, and then she had a couple of gifts, like, okay. I mean, basically, uh, you know what I mean, confirming her point, like, look, this is not the best podcast ever. So I played her sarcastically. I didn't get mad. I loved all of her comments and her gifts. But I'm like, <laughs> what made you, like, wherever you are in the world, whatever you have going on, there's plenty of interesting. All right, obviously you're on that page for what's being shared from it. So, what made you stop looking at the content? Just come up here and say, "Okay, this is the best podcast ever." It's like you volunteered that information, and I'm not gonna say I say you were a hater, but you did go out of your way to say that. Now, whether it was attention seeking or whatever. I, I still think it's like in the lane of a little bit of hate. Because if I don't like something, I'm not going to find the page and go tell you I don't like it. Yeah, that is true. Y'all have to understand, though. And and I'm telling you, because we're a little bit older, we're in a bit in the middle. Thank you. We are. We're in a bit of the, of the middle. I say that because. <laughs> yeah, y'all mid old. I'm old old. I say that because technology wise, we pretty know right. a lot of shit. Right. And, and also, on the other hand, we know what a Game Boy was, or right. you know what I mean. So right. we're we're in the we're I mean, in Game the, Boys was dope with the A and B button. Listen, <laughs> stupid. stupid. <laughs> I think I still got mine somewhere. No. A and B, that's it. You either gonna kick or that you gonna punch. Office. What you gonna do, nigga? <laughs> but no, <laughs> y'all have to understand. And things are different. Things are different. This is the the world of conversation. How I slide, you can't leave. <laughs> don't touch it. it it's the, the screen don't do that. why are you touching the screen <laughs> no but the cartridge is <laughs> changing this game another cartridge <laughs> that's me blowing it you put it, up back, you put it up back in the game boy <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going in here <laughs> it's the wrong way pull it out turn, 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 around. turn, around. turn around this nigga Damn. brought back memories I never had a game boy <laughs> like, I used to have to play with other people's game boys <laughs> I had no Game Boy neither. I never had a Game Boy. But them white people in school? All of them had one. Do do. Even some of my Sadiddy friends Doo-doo. had a Game Boy. I used to have to try to play that. Hey, let me see your shit. Nigga, I didn't even have a Whatcha column. Uh, what is that you playing? Tetris? Uh, what, what, <laughs> what, what, what let me see the, that. What was the little one that kept you kept on your keychain? The, uh, that, oh. that grew. You, you, oh, uh, a, ch- a chickpea, uh, a chickpea, uh, uh, go-go pet, ch- <laughs> chico pet. I have no pet. idea. Giga 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 pet. Giga pet. You oh, okay. You a, okay. A Giga I didn't even have one of those. I, I didn't, didn't have one of those. I didn't see other people use them. <laughs> and then when they came out with the, the Giga pet and Dear Diary included. Oh, 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 I, had none of that. I was on that like. Damn. Oh, shit. My grandma wasn't getting me no okay, game, boy. <laughs> she was like, that. nigga, look, you play with what you got in there. I don't give a fuck what's out. <laughs> nigga, uh, I give I a play. fuck what's cracking, nigga. You better play with your. <laughs> My parents, I think. You told me this shit was cracking. You better play that. My parents bought us a computer. We thought that shit was the coolest shit ever until they put in them uh, CDs. They're like, nah, nigga, you here to learn. <laughs> nigga, you still got floppy disks. <laughs> right. uh, they got playing. CDs and motherfuckers listen to music, mama. Yeah, me and my, ki- me and my brothers. No we music was, on no floppy? We was, on, <laughs> we was on number munchers, nigga. <laughs> number munchers was my shit for like a good two summers, nigga. When got word munchies came out? Hey, you Shit. got to wait till I pray this off, then maybe you can get one with CDs. Right. <laughs> got me fucked up. Oh, the greatness. Oh, man. Some of you, how far we done came. Some of you motherfuckers won't even understand how important this is. But I say that because that was the world of conversation. Mm-hmm. That was, one, you couldn't say everything you wanted to everybody, but that was conversation. Now, people only have conversation online. Yeah, you hear people say it all the time, like, you talking shit behind the screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they don't say shit any, <laughs> any right. other time. Right. So they feel comfortable to talk or say certain things. And again, I'm not trying to say that you don't have to like these things, but that's a part of conversation. Just like, okay, uh, Cardi B and, and Nicki Minaj getting into it, right? Yeah. That shit. Why can't you? I don't understand. Why can't you like both? There is so weird. There is room. Like black people feel like there's only room for only one thing. Not like because we're competitive in all that we and, do, and that is in the and it sucks. And we the, can't right, turn it off. I'm right. about to say it really does suck because we should be trying to help 
everybody who looks like us get up there. Even though, I must tell y'all this. I don't know if y'all know, but Cardi B ain't black, goddammit. Yeah. For me. Cardi B is not motherfucking yeah. black. And you know what I want to fucking bring up? I don't know if it's just our fucking black people syndrome is the reason why that we... And yeah, yeah, Nikki, you you one of our sisters, but bitch, you've been hating for a while. Our, every time she I'm not defending anything Nikki does. You've been a fucking hater. Right. But I don't know if it was the reason that most black people chose to go with Cardi B is because she wasn't in our race. No, you know what? For me, we didn't even know. I started thinking about yeah, racial. That's true. Well, we Dude, even from know. the fucking point that she was on fucking Love and Hip Hop, you should have known the bitch. Our motherfucking last name is Bell Cousin or whatever the fuck. You know, oh, like, not saying you, but just black women, period, that watch Love and Hip Hop, mm-hmm. they wouldn't have cared if she was black, white, or gold. Like, they just, the hooder they was, because and they was making it. And she, yeah. she. She uh, portrays. She carried like herself Erica as a Mina. black woman. Eric, everybody <laughs> like Erica Mina, Mina. No, they like her Spanish, for a minute. Spanish women are. You know what? Spanish women are just as niggas. Just like because there's long hair, it's big asses, this salsa dancing, and it's. Cardi B ain't that thing. What, no, what, but I, what, what, <laughs> what I'm saying is, it, for me, it wasn't just about her being black. It was about her being a woman. I'm a woman, so I'm like, oh, why okay. can't there just be more? Yeah, for me, it was just. Why can't there be more than one woman? And I don't give a fuck. Woman, woman of color to do mm-hmm. some fucking shit. Yeah. Why does it have to be? Oh no, she's better. She's better. When Power was out, and then the other move, the other series came out. What was it? it was like Snow or some shit like that came out. Yeah. And then people were like, "Oh, this shit is better than Power." Why the fuck can't they just be two dope ass fucking shows? I agree. I said this a little while ago. Like, well, not a little while. Maybe a couple weeks ago. When all the females on my page were like, um, Nikki's a hater. Nikki's this, Nikki's that. And a lot of the things I didn't know because not saying I'm sexist and don't follow the females because they're female, I just didn't know a lot of the history between them. Mm-hmm. But the thing I was thinking was like, okay, like Nikki's worth $85, $90 million. Cardi B just now starting to get her money. Why hate on her? And But then I had to start like in my weird brain. And I did put this out there, but I kind of held back because, you know, people, like, sometimes they're allergic to new thinking, so I just held it back. But I was thinking, like, okay, well, Cardi B, before Nicki even started, she shut down these people, she shut down these people, she shut down these people. I was like, okay. Now, this is the music business, right? Now, let's just look at regular business. Not saying Nikki ain't a hater, because some of the things that people told me kind of registered, okay, this bitch is kind of fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. But let's just think about businesses, period. When you think about business and somebody's owning, somebody's running this lane of business, when new businesses pop up, they usually try to squash them. Mm-hmm. Now, exactly what they beat the shit out of Nikki for trying to squash anything new. Not saying don't help your sisters come up, but Cardi B ain't your sister. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, she's of color, but she's not of us. I'm not defending Nikki, but I'm saying when we when you look at business like I do, because I, I invest, I ain't made no fucking money, but I got a lot of investors out here. They still breaking even. But most big businesses, most companies outside of the entertainment industry do the same exact thing. Yep. But when it's when it comes to the music industry, now we say, oh, she's hating on her. She told these people that she's not gonna associate with them if they associate with this person. And everybody said, oh, this motherfucking Nikki's a bitch. But your favorite, uh, what is this? This iPhone? <laughs> How's the Android? Well, I'm about to say, when, you know, if iPhone say, okay, if you associate with these characters I'm pulling out, nobody going to fucking diss them. I'm going to tell you why iPhone's not, because iPhone has Samsung parts in their phones. Samsung sponsors Android. Mm-hmm. Money is money. Money is money. Yeah, I'm Bis- saying that. <laughs> business is like what we don't know is Walmart gets shit from from other other stores. Other, if they don't have it, they'll get it from they'll pay for uh, from another store like Target. Yeah. Like, but okay. So if I feel like mm, I really I can do this, but however, I might just need you. So let me use you. Yeah. Because this is business. Mm-hmm. I may not really care for you. I'm gonna still try to put my shit up. But if I need you, mm-hmm. then I, I I need you. This is what I need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Walmart yeah. also shuts down your local fucking mom and pop grocery store. They do. 
That's we don't consider them haters. They, I, I do. Listen, after they shut down, that's big business. After though. they shut down Johnson Drive, I was like, <laughs> this is some absolute bullshit. Just because y'all built a raggedy ass Walmart to shut down their own Walmart to get you to come and fuck with this big Walmart. But I, I, I guess I'll say this: this is this is the only issue I have with with that whole thing. I feel like both ways. I agree with what you're saying. Like that's business, right? Mm-hmm. But I also feel like shit. That's that's it's talent. Mm-hmm. It's it's talent. Is is my talent good enough? Yeah, you good. Mm-hmm. But how good am I? Like mm-hmm. we ain't gonna be on this podcast. Like fuck this podcast. Fuck that podcast. And that podcast. Fuck them too. And if y'all no, never, and if y'all never. if y'all working with them, we ain't gonna do shit with y'all neither. No. Mm. Get your fucking money. If we good, we gonna make it. Period. Regardless on on whatever. So mm. if you good, you gonna fucking make it anyway. Yeah, that's why. I like that's what that's what that, that's what I was gonna say. If you good, you know, you saying like crush the other competitors or whatever, like mm. take them out the game. I understand that too. But when you think about like Beyonce. Like you don't never hear Beyonce fucking nobody over except for Michelle. That's it. You don't see, <laughs> don't see fucking nobody else over except for Michelle. <laughs> Yo, y'all see all the Michelle memes? Are you gonna do gospel, huh? <laughs> y'all see all the Michelle memes they had out? I ain't sharing none of your shit with Yo, my sixty were, billion shade, followers. <laughs> the shade they was doing on Michelle, dude. I wonder what Michelle did. I don't know what Michelle. Michelle was singing gospel. Before Michelle got skinny, I will say. Before you continue, I think Michelle was the baddest motherfucker in that group. Man, I don't remember. I don't remember none of them. I just remember they had five people in the group. No, <laughs> yeah, when it was, was just three, <laughs> <laughs> like then it was three, then it was just one. It ain't nothing happened. <laughs> I like when Latoya. And Everybody Bobby else were left. There. Was it the Bills? 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 Yeah, they was it all was five the, there. It was that first. one You know what? I think. Which one? I think that was one of the yeah, Bill, 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 and Wyclef on there. Yeah, yeah, it was dope. I was like, oh shit, the writings dude. on the wall was my shit. Yeah, they it, came up with like, that album. it was one of those kind of sort of man bashing anthems, but, but it was so dope. I still rocked it. it, it you know what I mean? Right. When I was riding by myself. Right. <laughs> so we got Beyonce just taking over. Beyonce is our Whitney Houston. Yeah, Beyonce is our uh, damn. I just had her name, Diana Ross. Mm-hmm. These these are like top performers over our. She's in, our in, fucking everything as far yeah. as female entertainment. She just Even ta- she just Tina t- Turner, like yeah, she's yeah, all she, of them wrapped into one. Right, but you ain't really. I've I've never heard of her hating on somebody to bring somebody else down. I've never heard of heard mm-hmm. of her doing that. So I'm not gonna say it ain't out there, but it ain't as prevalent or or relevant as it is with Nicki Minaj trying to sabotage people's lives. Beyonce just got on her shit and it just made other shit happen. Like, yeah, the the visual video, music video, the, the visual uh, album that she put out. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was the first one or not, but that was the first time I ever heard that you can even do some shit like that. I didn't know you could have a visual album. <laughs> like, bitch, where is the actual CD? Like, you only can buy the DVD. That came <laughs> with oh, social media. Oh, what's that came with social media. Yeah. I don't know. What's was doing that? God damn, Who? why we keep bringing him up? R. Kelly kind of did yeah. that shit. We what, can't, what, which one? Which with one? every fucking song he had, he did the basically. The visual on the, it? And, yeah. and, and, he, uh, but damn can't you! get rid of this motherfucker. You keep coming it. fucking back. But, you know, like the first time I seen it was uh, Beyonce did yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it kind of made me. That lemonade, was it the lemonade one? Yeah. yeah I thought that was fucking dope. Then she keeps stretching and stretching and stretching. When she came out with the girls run the world, yeah. that just took over a whole different group of people. Yeah, she's at the Super Bowl. She's you know like she's just fucking Super dope. Bowling. And you and you and you compare her <laughs> to Nicki Minaj, and you kind of like, damn, I wish she had some more fucking class, Nicki Minaj. Like, hey, you know fuck? what? Hey, before we get off this, because I do want to bring in some more topics, because I need y'all input on it. I think with Nicki Minaj, maybe she went about it the wrong way. And I kind of think, okay, like they're are, are they're in the rap game. Beyonce is in the R and B game. She's smart enough to know you can't squash R and B. Like even niggas that don't do nothing but listen to rap when they're in front of you, they love some good R and B. A good R and B song can take you more places. Well, than the rap nowadays, because nowadays the rap is just it. It's it. It depends on the mood. Back then, you could set your life to some of the rap songs. This is the movement I'm on. Okay, this is where I want to go with it. This is the fucking um, the, the anthem to my <laughs> life. But now, if you bumping Migos, that's not the anthem to your fucking life. Right, right. You know what I mean? You could, eh, 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 eh. No, that, right. that can never be the anthem to my life. Right. You know what I mean? Just my opinion. 
just real quick, because I know you about to stop. Let <laughs> this get out <laughs> of the conversation. Don't come with the amigos like that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep going. At <laughs> I need to be the bitty. I need to be the bitty. I think it's fear. Oh, shit. That's my anthem to my life. I, <laughs> I, I, I think it's fear for Nikki. I'm sorry. I feel like oh, yeah, it's definitely you, you fear. had it. You had the whole stage. I don't think it's fear, but go I ahead. Do. You had the whole stage for 10 years. For 10 years. It was yours. Somebody yeah. was really gunning for her spot, and you know, they taking yeah, it. I, I, she, ain't yeah. never wore, she ain't never wore one a, a Grammy. Is that what it was? She ain't never wore yeah, something. She, she, yeah, it was a. It was she ain't never won album of the year or something like that. There's a whole lot of things that came up after after uh, Cardi won the Grammy and, last week, and that's that's my point. Like it's it's the fact that you, but then she has to look at it too. It's other rappers out there who have been out there. It's female rappers that are really fucking good, but they couldn't get that hype because shit. You you took the stage, which I mean, if you good, you good. It is what it is. But you also have to use that same. It, it is it, you. You gotta. I mean, keep that same energy. Keep that same energy yeah. that you had. I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't. You shouldn't want to be like, well, shit. I'm out sell her shit, or I'm gonna watch what she doing. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I want to do better than this. Like you, you know, people yeah. study other people on what the fuck they do to be better than them, and nothing is wrong with that. But when you just pout and get a, a attitude like. I don't want y'all working with them. Like shit, that makes the other person look good to be like shit. I don't even fucking need them. Yeah. And I and I still climbed higher. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Instead of you just, instead of you just like saying I'm gonna just I'm gonna win it the right way and show people shit. I'm still in the game and I'm still the best. It is yeah. what it is. So that's that's. <laughs> Let me play devil's advocate for one time. Okay. Let me come in on Bianca Brown's lane. Let's see if you could if you could really do it. Let me see if I could kill this shit. Let's see. One of the things we have to consider is now if I ask y'all this question on who have been major, not not female rappers, but major female rappers, you couldn't even count like you would only need one hand, and you might not even use all the fingers. Mm-hmm. I think. That Nicki Minaj thought that she could squash this because when are are you think about Lil Kim, you think about Nicki Minaj, mm-hmm. there were no others. Mm-hmm. I feel like every I do. I feel like everybody maybe maybe okay coming from somebody like really would you listen to female rappers? I uh, okay n- not so, a lot. So coming, but hold on, you gotta let me finish my point too because you're coming in because you're female. But hold on. Let me make this devil's advocate. Let me make this devil's advocate point, because I let you make yours, mm-hmm. and this is gonna be really tight. It's gonna be dope. I use the old school words. It's gonna be tight and dope. Um, I like using dope. There were I no know. female rappers who made it on a major scale. Mm-hmm. This isn't the norm. Cardi B is not the norm. You had two up until like let's just go back a few years and just Cardi. All right, let's put Cardi B back on Love and Hip Hop. Only thing you had was Little Kim and Nicki Minaj, and Little Kim had dope ass, a dope ass sponsor, one of the dopest. So she had a given. Now you got Nicki Minaj. Now you coming into this lane even before you got in that lane, even before you blew big, like you know that this is rare, this is uncharted territory. So before it was a Nicki Minaj, we 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 went all the way back to Little Kim. We got to. I, who? I, 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 I mean, who were the major why. ones? I will tell you why. As far as major, because I know what you're saying. We had Eve. We had Shauna. But listen, this is what he's saying, and I get what he's saying. As far as on no, a major no, no. level, I get, like no, I, I get what you're saying. I, I know. I agree. Eve was never as I, big as him. I, I get what I you. Agree. But let me finish. Let me finish, Thank guys. You. Let me get, let me finish. Okay. So you got this person that's in this lane. She's studying the history of it because Nikki, trust me, she's a historian. She knows about it. So she's trying to ma- even though you shouldn't have to like sitting back looking at history, history would indicate to you that Cardi B's gonna fizzle out. It ain't gonna happen. Mm-hmm. It ain't gonna happen. So because I never like if you look at my social media posts, I never said that she needed to hate. I never once said she needed to hate. She could have just, like, if history would have been on her side as far as, like, when you research history or you research anything that you fucking research that pertains to your life, then it, history would indicate that Cardi B's not going to make it. But as she started to make it, and like I said, I'm playing devil's advocate, now you start to think about, okay, because Nikki didn't have 
the social media cosign. Like Nikki didn't have the social media reality show cosign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it would have seen it seemed like the odds were against Cardi B to ever become the Grammy, the now Grammy winning best selling artist that she is now. True that. Like if you look at that, you would think that you were safe. For for a long time, and mm-hmm. and when you're in that position, who who doesn't want to be safe? Right. Like who doesn't? Are you worth ninety million dollars now? Like people be having billion dollar an- ambitions. Like who, who? No, you don't want this motherfucker because. And, and, and another thing on the devil because on the devil's advocate side, why do I fuck? Why do I put too many sil- uh, syllables in this shit? Another thing on the devil's advocate side of female rappers. Not only do you think that another motherfucker's not going to blow, but you don't think a motherfucker's going to approach you because how many times have you seen two dominant female personalities at once? Yep. Little Kim was fucking dead mm-hmm. by the time Nikki came. And now Nikki's hot, hot. And now all of a sudden you got Cardi B right on your ass. Listen, how many times has that happened was, in history? It, it was meant to happen. We we have to. But remember. how many times has it happened in history? But, but listen, Zero. just answer my question before you go on yours. Zero. What do you mean? How many times have you had dominant. a dominant, dominant, major, major female artist, and you got another one on on you, their heels? You have it, and you know what? This is that's what I'm saying. This, but this is this is what I'm saying too. Again, what we have to remember is generation. Okay, little Kim. Was for that generation. It, it's never been. Women have never. We have never even allowed it. I don't give a fuck what color you are. More than one person to take a spot for a long time until it right. was like a yo yo and Queen Latifah and shit like that. Since that it happened, was ma- it, they, they, they was, never yeah. got to the level but, of major. But, but, but what I'm saying is, period. It doesn't matter. We talking about major. We just what, talking about people who rap. But listen, or major. But listen to what I'm saying. Period. Like <laughs> little 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 Kim was for, little Kim was for that generation. Then came Nikki. Yeah. Nikki was for that generation. This is why his No, Nikki's generation. Nikki, so Nikki Nikki's generation too. passed? Is Nikki, that what you said? If, if you go to if you it go it to looks like, it you, looks like yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, do the competition, but yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when yeah. you're talking about little Kim's generation and Nikki's generation, we're talking about time. Yeah. So now that you talk about little Kim, now you're talking but about Nikki's Kim generation on, and Cardi B's. I, now we're talking about just competition. But little Kim, but look, yeah, that is true. But little Kim only had a certain amount of time too. So I'm guessing Nicki Minaj time. Oh, she had forever, but Nicki, mm, Nicki little Minaj. Kim went crazy. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm just saying, but like, <laughs> period. She but fucked her generation up. But you know what I mean? Like, not, I think what she's saying is that everybody has a generational person, and I think Nicki Minaj she's, is probably on her way out. She's on her way and out. And Cardi B is on her way in. I'm not and trying, I can see that. She's, I'm not saying she ain't it's gonna time fight. To pass the torch. I'm not trying to say she Nicki ain't gonna Minaj fight. Nicki Minaj fucked up her shit because. Basically, what I'm saying is now I'm not on Dev- now I'm not on Devil's Advocate. I, I gave the generational, uh, I gave the uh, the history of female major rappers to you. But now let me say why Nicki fucked up. Mm-hmm. Your generation wasn't over. The only thing you had to do was accept change and said, "Okay, there will be another female rapper major that people love." This is about to be the time where there are two. For the first time in hip hop history, mm-hmm. there are two major selling females. Mm-hmm. All she had to do was embrace her. Yep. Her fucking run wasn't over. She, if her run turns out to be over, she ended it. It was not because people didn't like her anymore. Social media is the is the place now to where everybody can paint you as a hater because of the things that you displayed. And now that's what you are because the people who like Cardi B didn't necessarily hate fucking Nicki Minaj. But now that you put that shit out there that you didn't want Cardi B to be where Cardi B is, now you're the hater. You're ending your own shit. You don't have to be, even though you're 90 million strong, you cool. But that's how but you didn't have to end your reign. You still would have been liked, but you wouldn't have been. But you, you, you were, you were going down. I feel. I feel like. Even, How is she going down? Hold on, hold on. Cardi B's made one album. Her no, next no. one could be trash. Sometimes, sometimes your your generation. She's is, not a lyricist. Your sometimes your generation ends when somebody pops up, and that's what happened. Like our generation. It, li- listen to this. What generation? Okay, listen, but, uh, listen to this though. Like, like, like Jay Z right now, right? Yeah. Like everybody, Jay Z got a, a a particular crowd that follows him, right? Mm-hmm. Now. People now these kids that are growing up or whatever somebody popped up and now mumble rap was in. Mm-hmm. Now that's that's the new thing. Jay Z is not as in anymore. 
he got he still got his following. Yeah. But now you got these mumble rappers popped up that they're kind of like pushing the Jay Z's and the Nas's out, right? Yeah. The little Wayne's, all them out, right? That's the same thing happened with Nicki Minaj. Cardi B pops up. Mm-hmm. Now her generation is now com- is going is coming uh not is it, ending yeah. because she popped up. Not because I don't feel like it was because like. Her generation period was just in it like her time was done. Jay Z was around for a long fucking time. And he's still around, time. and like he's still around. Years. Right, he's still around. Right. So when you talk about Cardi B, only reason why Nicki Minaj is becoming irrelevant is because Cardi B popped up and it's stopping. It's, it's starting a new generation now. Yeah, but the only thing I'm saying is, do you fit? Like I feel like Nicki accelerated her demise by hating. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And had you embraced definitely. Cardi B, like it, like Nikki's smart, but she's not that smart. She had the game, like okay, it ain't. It's only world. Hey, she was the queen B. I don't know if it was self proclaimed. I don't know who else gave her the name, mm-hmm. but she was the queen because history told you it's only gonna be one queen. Yeah, but she didn't accept Nikki, and now we get we're into the point like the Bay Hive and whatever fuck. Uh, Cardi B call our people like now you got the fans coming they super aggressive because before social media your fans couldn't band against anybody and say okay now nah, we here they everywhere on social media talking about nah nah you's a hate motherfucker this is what's new this is what's up now social media runs that yeah. so Cardi B's in at the time to where Nikki should have saw like okay we're in a different era mm-hmm. this social media area I mean this is the social media era Everybody fucking hears what the fans are saying because when uh, when Lil Kim was raining, nobody heard what the fucking fans were saying. You know what I mean? You had the running the motherfuckers on the street to ask them who who was the best. <laughs> now you <laughs> who the best out here? Motherfucker can't get on their phone and type. No, no, no. So Nikki fucking slipped because she didn't embrace Cardi in a time to where. If you got some serious competition, okay, in the beginning, you watch the sound scan. You're 90 minutes strong. You've been through this game. You know how it works. Once you see her coming up, the thing you do, you get on tracks with Cardi. You yeah. fucking invite Cardi. Yeah. Before she get 10 million strong, when she only got a fucking, when she only got $500,000, yeah. oh, this motherfucker about to be hot. Mm, I, I might need to embrace her. Yep, and people told her that. Nikki fucked crushing. up her reign I, up. It wasn't a generational I, I, thing. I, I, agree I agree with her speeding up her process of fucking up her situation. But again, from being on, on Instagram, are you on Instagram a lot? Yeah, I'm on. I'm, I'm on Instagram more than I'm on Facebook now. I'm on Instagram more than I'm on Facebook. So, listen, <laughs> so are, are, you, are you following Cardi B? Yeah. Okay, so listen to this. Listen to this. In this generation, in this generation. Fuck yeah, I follow Cardi B. In this, in this generation. <laughs> I'm an old nigga, but I'm trendy too. I'm on Cardi shit. In this generation, mm-hmm. a lot of people like when you open up your life about mm-hmm. every fucking thing. You know what I mean? Like, I noticed that most most people IG's page that have a lot of followers, even on Twitter, are people who are open mm-hmm. about shit. That's what gets people's attention. That's what gets them like, oh, you're, you're, you're on Instagram or follow their page or do this or do that. Cardi is very fucking open. Very mm-hmm. fucking open all the time. They eat that shit up. They eat that shit up. You know what? There's always someone there to tell them tactics like this will help you get better or this will help you do this. And when she was on Love and Hip Hop, what made people like her so much? She was just herself. Because she was herself. She I was just about to bring it up. Said, That's the thing that I think Nikki should have recognized. Cardi had the so Cardi had the reality show shit. Mm-hmm. That's fucking hotter than any fucking thing um, now. Like, it, would you say uh, before we start the show, the in the now shit? Reality shows is the now. Right. Cardi was already fucking huge before she even man. When she, I, everybody knows I, when she was dropping her mixtapes, that motherfucker didn't give a fuck about that. No, we don't give a fuck about your raggedy ass mixtapes, mm-hmm. nigga. We love your on screen personality. Just our personality. She fucking was already about to blow because people liked her. They related to her before she. Nikki should have recognized that. Look, this bitch got a head start. Right. Before she even drops some motherfucking music that motherfuckers like, I need to fuck. When she came with that album, Nikki should have fucked with it because she had the head start. Right. Ain't nobody ever watched you on a reality show, learned your everyday life, learned that your person, damn, this bitch talk like me. Mm-hmm. This bitch ghetto like me. Mm-hmm. This bitch loud like me. This bitch work a pole just like me. 
Bitch, you should have motherfucking listened. Fucking knew the game. Cardi had a head start. She fucking took off. Had you not hated, it mm-hmm. could have been. It, it's room, just like you just said earlier, it's room for two. Mm-hmm. But you wanted to keep it at one. So you fucked your shit up. Right. Not Cardi. Right. And you were going to die anyway. No, don't, don't, get, don't get me wrong. I, <laughs> no, she was Don't get me wrong. I she like was not going to die. I don't think she was going to die, but I think, <laughs> exactly. I, I think she was. She was not going to die. I think, I think she did open up the door. I, think, I do think she opened up the that door. That was before. your opinion. You got beat. No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, you did. I don't, I don't, I don't I'm personally gonna, don't think she I'm was going to die. She wasn't. I'm no, 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 no. Like She's a better lyricist. Why would you die in a rap no, game no. when you're the better lyricist? No, what I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, like, but she she was going down. Like, she, she wasn't on top of her game like she used to be because her... I'm, I'm guessing like her last album didn't do so well. She ended up putting that out. That was in the Cardi B era, though. And she was already known as a hater. <laughs> yeah, she fucked her shit up. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> she fucked her shit still, up, bro. At, like what, at, what point, at what point do you feel like she was going downhill? Like she, she was. After she Cardi? Was, before Cardi. When, when did you feel that way? When she's. When, even when, when a lot of people start to say, and even I noticed it too, like your flow started to sound commercial. Like you, you like you used to feel when, and don't get me wrong, I love fucking Nikki. Like I mean, actually, I was just about to say, I, I now mean, you don't like. I Nikki. mean, like actually going out and buy. No, I still like her. I still like her. I'm not one of them people who like. I gotta pick one. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I ain't never felt like I gotta pick one person to like. If I right, like you, I like you. But I just, but you could tell when you can tell the difference from when Nikki was hungry to when Nikki got comfortable. Yeah. You can just tell the difference, yeah. and it's like. For any artist, when you, you sure start to tell. yeah, when you start getting too fucking comfortable, like there's always gonna be somebody trying. That's the only to, thing I was saying, and you know why she got comfortable, right? She didn't feel like her time was gonna right, end exactly, anytime. Right. That's exactly. the only thing I'm saying. Right, and I'm right. not saying that you're not, but I'm just saying to me, she she got one, she got too fucking comfortable, and that opened the door, and that opened the door. That's what happened. That's what that I agree op- on. That opened the door for somebody else, and then I feel like too. We're getting fucking older. We're getting older. Shit yep. that we fucking like. Like, we ain't like fucking mumble rap. Because Nicki Minaj's been around since 2000 and what, like six? Has it been that long? Or before? Because Lil Wayne, whatever the, the drought three came out. Oh, no. Out. That's a, that that seems like a long time to me. 13 came, years? Yeah, she came out with Drake. And I know Drake came out. It had to be 2006 or seven or eight. It, it had to be around that, at that I'm time. I'm getting old. Time is going by yeah. Entirely too fast. <laughs> it was. Oh, it was 2006. Because that's when she was, yeah. It was yeah. like, well, it was 2007. So, well, Your time yeah. is fucked up, nigga. I grew up on Bow Wow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Your time ain't right. <laughs> Yo, I went home and I was hey, telling everybody home. that, bro. I, they was cracking up. They was like, old ass Ron did not go with fucking Bow Wow. <laughs> hey, you know what? I thought about that shit and I hey. thought about what I said on the show. I was like, dude, I swear to God in my mind, <laughs> Bow Wow was cracking sleep. since Arsenio. Right? <laughs> I did grow up with Bow Wow. <laughs> Y'all know me by now. I, I have no. Hey, you know what? Motherfuckers was like, motherfuckers listen to the show like, bro, you ain't grow up a little motherfucker right. Bow Wow. <laughs> so I listen. I, I was thinking like, damn, for some reason oh, in my man. mind, I really thought that Bow Wow was around since our city. You, nigga you, grew, up, bro, you grew up with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> 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 he grew up with Bow Wow. How? Bro, I was having nightmares. Like, I know I did. Nigga, you was hey. the LBC. Nigga, it was Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Look back when we were around, bro. Hey, you know what? I I will say this. I fucked up because <laughs> I'm I'm like, true. damn. I could have sworn like because most uh, uh, artists that went on Arsenio, you shaking your head. You even heard what I said. Most artists that went on Arsenio wow, was about to drop. They, they, they was, they was. But little Bow Wow. So was for on some there. reason, I'm like, shit. This fucking solo album had to come out about a year <laughs> after that. This shit came out two thousand. But like, I ain't got no problem with a minute because I could have edited this shit out the show. <laughs> I got no problem with. It. I control the. <laughs> this nigga Ryan was hey, I control the final it. edit. I left it out there. It, I, I know. And the good part about it, a lot of people that listen to it that I know was like, bro, that shit is hilarious as fuck. And that's all that matters. That was Y'all hilarious. call me up fucked up. Yeah, but man. I could have sworn. I could have sworn. <laughs> like, like, why is this nigga on our studio? We ain't got an album Boy, dropping. This was like, not today. Bro. Nigga, hell <laughs> no. Nah. I know. I I why this nigga on our studio? We ain't got nothing yeah, dropping. Yo, I always tell people all the time, it felt like. I was older than Bow Wow, <laughs> and then as we got older, this nigga caught up. Like that's how it. That's how it. That's felt. always how it feels, bro. I was like, what did the nigga turn twenty one? 
<laughs> like, I'm 21. And because he started recording so young, like, people, yeah. and this was the thing, even though I'm a little bit out of the range, like, my thing was that I thought that he dropped the album after Arsenio. <laughs> but when you think about it, like, how old are you? 31. Are you 31? Let's just say somebody exact same age as you. Let's say you 12. Mm-hmm. And a motherfucker drop a motherfucker album at 10. And you say you grew up with him, y'all the same age. Motherfucker, you did. It don't matter because he's your motherfucking age. He dropped the album at eight. <laughs> Shit. So, motherfucker, you've been listening to the nigga for 20 years. But, Ron, but he did not. No, no. I already know the thing. I listened okay, to the okay. I already know the thing. My thing was, I'm thinking he dropped whatever fucking album he dropped because it's not like I know the dates of his album. I just so been listening to that one for so long. you definitely didn't even know his first album. What was it? Exactly. Hold on, give me one minute. Give me one minute. It was what? called Bow Wow Hippie O Hippie A. Everybody knows that. No, I don't know what it was. I'm about to know it was. Nigga <laughs> <laughs> said everyone knows that. But it's called probably Little Bow Wow or something. Nah, like it that. was it was some it was some I don't, I don't know, but he's been famous for a long time. <laughs> Bow Wow Chronicle, something like that. Hey, right, you know what? Now we have to I got that out of there. Like I said, I'm not ashamed of that. I can try. Beware of the dog. Wasn't that Snoop Dogg's album? No. It wasn't. <laughs> Hell no. No, no, I'm saying this Snoop Dogg album. Now you don't even know Snoop Dogg album. See, that's the you know fucked why? up thing about you know generations. Why? You know why? Because I didn't right. fucking grow up on Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I grew up on Bow Wow. <laughs> you didn't grow up on Snoop? I did not grow up on Snoop. I did. I can and tell he didn't grow up. Hey, you how, know, did, how did we grow up on Snoop when Snoop, when, when Snoop came out? It was 1990. I, I didn't. I turned three in nineteen. I mean, I turned three in nineteen ninety. Because he been dropping every since nineteen ninety. Oh. I mean, I can. Say, but when you say grew up, that means that once you started growing. No, I remember the other motherfucker. NWA. Yes, I. Did. I didn't remember listening to NWA. Okay. But I was. I was really close. And like, you know what? I believe him. Did you see the picture that he posted a couple Sundays ago <laughs> in church? Did you see that white sweater? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm a church guy. That nigga did not grow up on Snoop. <laughs> I grew up on Snoop. That nigga had the thickest. It was like he had a whole fucking sheep. Nigga, I grew up on Kurt Franklin. Can you hear me? <laughs> oh yeah, we got did a you, church thing going over here. You had the that nigga sweater had the biggest buttons on did it I ever seen in my life. No, that's a cardigan shit. sweater. That was a big ass. That was, that was a big nice ass, ass buttons. Ass cardigan. Hey, you had the sweater All right. over the horn. <laughs> I gotta get y'all in this. We got about we about an hour and a half in. We gotta get to the real. We gotta get to the yes, meat. We what we got? We gotta get to the meat. What we got? Hopefully y'all saw the exchange between Monique and Steve Harvey. I did it not. Was I went to watch it. I did it not. Well, I got to ask you this because you've seen it. Okay. I got to ask you this because you've seen it. And I got to say this. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are painting Steve Harvey as a sellout right now. Why? I saw that. I will, <laughs> I I will say, and you know what? I watched it and I didn't get the right vibe from Steve Harvey. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I have not been, and as y'all know, on this show, the people who listen and the people who are on it. I, of course, you heard it. I defended Monique with everything I had because I'm an integrity person. Mm-hmm. The way you feel, the way what you believe in, motherfucker, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. It can be, well, I ain't going to say it could be stupid, but if that's how you feel, about these people who are fucking blackballing you, who are fucking taking opportunities from you, I feel it. I'm not going to tell you to shut up. In my mind, I'm, I could say, well, shit, you could make it easier on yourself by motherfucking just fucking letting up and doing this and doing that, make you some money, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I could say that, but that's not what the fuck I said, and I'm not used to saying that. Mm-hmm. But when she had this exchange with Steve Harvey on his show, Steve Harvey basically told her, you fucking up the meal ticket for future generations. You you are fucking, look, you have, this is the gist of it. These are not the exact words. You have to watch the video, mm-hmm. five, six minute video. Steve Harvey basically played house nigga. Like, this ain't white, this ain't black, this is, mo- this is the money game. Mm-hmm. You are out here t- rave, ranting and raving about your integrity, and you are fucking up the money. He basically told her, the way you feel about these people, and the way you're reacting and constantly trying to say that these people have fucked you over, is fucking up your money. Let that shit go and get your money. I've never painted Steve Harvey as a coon. 
I never painted Steve Harvey as a motherfucker that didn't give a fuck about our struggle. But after I saw after I saw that clip, my opinion on Steve Harvey is that he's a little warped. What did she say? This is, this is, this is, she this didn't is, agree with him at all. Yeah, this is. I mean, she stood up with him and like. It's the same. She called shit. him basically everything. All right, her response was she was put on the stop. She was put on the spot, basically. I guess she felt, and she kept calling him her brother. Right. You know, y'all know how Monique is. Right. My babies, my brother. My she feels like, and the reason I sympathize with Monique is because I'm that type of motherfucking person. If I get the motherfucking industry and motherfuckers do me wrong, this, this, and that, I'm gonna motherfucker try to make sure that you motherfuckers know about it. But motherfuckers don't care about that shit, and it's sad. Motherfuckers don't give a fuck about. How you feel about these rich people, they're going to be like, shit, well, them the rich people. Motherfuckers worship money now. They winning and you not. But they, are, they are right and you not. Steve Harvey basically told her, look, hide your integrity. Fuck how you feel. Play this game and get you some money. That's what I'm doing. And I felt like Steve Harvey was on some bullshit. Not saying if you don't stand for nothing, because I don't know what struggle Steve Harvey has been through in the industry. I don't. But as far as you telling Monique to tuck the way you feel about the way the industry has treated you, then, and, and we all have our own opinions on how she was done by Oprah. Um, What the fuck is the guy's name? Oprah and... It was three people. Oprah, what's the motherfucker? The, the Tyler Perry, Oprah, Tyler Perry, and, and the one guy who owed Damon Dash the money. The uh, the gay Daniels. dude. Huh? And Lee Daniels. And Lee Daniels. He basically like, look, you got to let that go. You can't tell a person to let that go if, if you don't know the inside details of that. And I, I don't know the inside details of that. I know, look, I know what's been reported. So I don't know what Monique been through with these people. So I can't motherfucking sit here and say that you should let that shit go. And if I was in Steve Harvey's position, I would tell her to let that shit go just to get some money. First of all, <clears throat> we're regular people. Monique is probably eight, ten million strong. She ain't got to do nothing else the rest of her life. She's making money. She's still content. She's still obsessed with what the fuck she's been through and she wants these people to pay. Which they're not because people always look at them as if they're right. I, she, Oprah got a big. Oprah got three billion dollars. She ain't wrong. But look, all right. The thing I'm asking y'all is, how do you feel about integrity versus money? I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell y'all a quick story about my grandfather. He passed away. My grandfather, Sorry to hear that. That's cool. My grandfather, he drove this raggedy ass car every day to work. Right. And I was like, Papa, man, you making a little bit of good money, right? And I'm like seven or eight years old. I don't really know what money he makes, but he drove trucks. But to work, he drove this beat-up-ass car every day to work, right? Then got in his truck, and then he went to, then he did his job and came back, got his beat-up-ass car, went home. But his car that he would drive when he wasn't going to work was a nice-ass car. And I always was like, Papa, why would you drive this car that's probably going to give up on you any time? <laughs> like, it's raggedy instead of your nice car. And this is what he told me. He was like, when they see me pull up in this nice car, they're going to feel like I pay, they pay me too much. And then they're going to start fucking with my money. <laughs> he was like, as long as they know I'm broke, you ain't got to never worry about them fucking with my money, right? Mm. But I always was thinking like that, like... What the fuck does that matter? Like what you driving, you know, back and forth the car, you know, what car to use or whatever, right? I'm thinking like that now. Right. But my grandpa was trying to tell me was play your goddamn role and get your money. Don't let other people fuck up your money. He was he was trying to tell me, like, I drive this car to work. Mm -hmm. So they won't think to fuck up my money. Let them consider me poor. Don't ever let them know what I got a brand new house. Or let them know I got a nice ass car, right? And I think that's what yeah. Steve Harvey was kind of trying to tell her as a as a brother. Now, if this conversation was behind scenes and we was in the house kicking it, and Steve Harvey was like, "I understand what the fuck you going through, mm -hmm. but you fucking up your money. Mm -hmm. Like you up here fighting for millions of dollars from Netflix when you could be getting the millions of dollars from somewhere else, but you mm -hmm. fucking it up by." Burning your bridges. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he was trying to say as his, as his, like, you know, a fellow person in comedy. So I don't think I want to call him a coon or anything like that because if me and him was having that conversation, he was just a regular ass nigga that's part of the family and he was telling me, 
<clears throat> make sure you drive that raggedy ass car to work instead of this nice ass car so they won't fuck up your money. Mm. And I will agree with that. And I think Steve Harvey was trying to tell her that. And I think sometimes, like you were saying, like your integrity, sometimes that shit is bigger than what the main goal is. And that's for you to make fucking money. Mm. Like, not saying Monique doesn't do her part in the black community, but I ain't never been like, damn, when Monique gonna do something in the black community? <laughs> like, I ain't never yeah. been that person. Yeah. So I'm never gonna look at Monique as a person that's gonna do something for the black community. Like, I know she's a comedian. Mm. I know she wanted to make money. I know that's what the objective is. Mm. Fucking make sure that's the goal then. Mm. If you're gonna be an activist, you wanna be, you know, for black women and black people, mm -hmm. then be that. You know what I mean? Like Kaepernick, that shit comes with that shit comes with a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for the big responsibility? She mm -hmm. got it. She obviously she is. She she started. You know what? I feel like this. The difference between your grandfather's time and our time is totally different. But Monique was around that time. But what I'm saying is that the difference is is if she doesn't stand up and say I demand more, little black girls that's looking at her is like. We should like we should not demand more, or we should, but let's have these conversations behind closed doors because you know we don't want them to hear us talking about that we want more. Like it's it's that that I understand that part because my grandfather was the same way. That's why I knew what you were going to say when you. My grandfather was the same way. However, I feel like this is a if we want things to change, someone has to take the L. And it I agree. I agree with and that. Someone has to take the L. So it's not always going to be like, let's play along. Let's play along right. so we can get what we get and then expect. Why are things changing? Right. That's why. Because we still talking behind closed doors about shit when we need to pull up to your shit and say, no, this is what I need. And this is what the fuck I deserve. Right. And this is what I feel like I fucking deserve. Like, because if not, then they're going to say. You know, okay, well, they're still... Because they do it every day. They do it every day. I'm pretty sure we work at fucking jobs that you wouldn't even know the person next to you who probably do less is getting paid more. I do. I Are y'all y'all in the same... In the, have the same fucking job title and they get paid more the fuck than you do and they probably even haven't been there longer than you. I agree with that. I man. need more than this shit. You, mm. you, I do hard work. I deserve more than what the fuck you giving me. And I shouldn't have to go behind closed doors to demand my shit. If I have to take the L so that other people need to, so other people that are coming up can say, no, this is what I need. This is what I need. Nothing gets done if we don't fucking demand it. Our money and, and, and our talent and everything else means fucking something. Yeah. But we got, but we got to look at it like this too. Is Monique that spokesperson? Like if, if I was like, if we was having problems okay, in the black community, like no, no. Look at it though. Look, if we have a black, <laughs> if we was having problems in the black community about pushing forward, right? Mm -hmm. Would you want one of those Instagram famous niggas to be one of those guys? I don't give a no, fuck. No, no, no. Hold on, but you're twisting it. I, this is what I'm saying. I, first of all, like I added no political significance I, I, to my situation. Just, I was going off of what she was saying. You know what? Malcolm X was a fucking pimp and a fucking user before he was Malcolm X. Yeah, but. And I and I agree with that. But once he decided to be fucking Malcolm X, he was fucking Malcolm X. Like we we didn't know. Yeah, like, but not everybody. Trust me, not everybody looked at him as that. Right, and I agree. But there was when, a lot of motherfuckers who knew him as the pimp and the pusher. Right. They said, "What the fuck are you doing? Why are you speaking for us?" Exactly. Right. But then when he, when 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 he was, I guess what I'm trying to say is, when Malcolm X was out here fucking up, right, 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 and then he became what was it, Muslim? When he became yeah. Muslim and he he like people changed, right? Mm -hmm. And he put that shit behind him, right? Mm -hmm. So now he has a whole different following now. He know he don't even have that following that he used to have. Mm -hmm. He has a whole different following now. Then he begins his, his I mean, role, I'm sure right? some still follow him. Right, yeah. right, right. But I'm saying but there were some who feel that people can't change. Right, right. But then he proceeded to be who he is, right? right? And that's the thing what I'm saying, like if we're gonna talk about political with Monique, right? When was that change where we was like we about to follow Monique. I don't remember being that. I don't remember having that change. I don't remember. I don't remember. You know, when, 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 we, when Kaepernick came up, right? We knew he was a fucking football player. We never knew that he stood up for black, like racism and shit like that. I didn't know that until he took a knee. Mm -hmm. And then he said why he took a knee. Mm -hmm. At that point, what did we do? We knew this was going to be the change. Mm -hmm. We was following this nigga, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, when was that Monique change where we was like, we're going to follow her? I don't remember that fucking change. <laughs> Go ahead. 
No, go ahead. Cause y'all know how to answer. Nobody. No, no I got the answer. I, I told her to go ahead. I got the fucking answer. Who got the answer? I got the answer. I'm say about to say this. Say One it. of the things we don't do as black people is when somebody fucking tries to fucking change the norm. When somebody fucking tries to go against the fucking grain with the way most of the people are fucking thinking, we don't fucking agree with them. Gotta be a but, 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 but. but. Once motherfuckers start to fucking think differently, and it's fucking saying the black community, we fucking go on every day about weird ass shit. We talking about cheating. We talking about sex. We talking about relationships. We talking about bull, all kind of bullshit that ain't got nothing to do with the progression of black people. Once that motherfucker starts to talk about it, now he's the weirdo. Now, oh, uh, oh, uh, now it's the unpopular opinion when it should be the most popular opinion. And I agree, but I agree, but if I'm gonna, I gotta know who I'm talking about. You know, are you? Why do you have to know? I, I'm not gonna think of I'm not gonna think of a crackhead just gonna be if, up here talking about if it's a crackhead that come up and say the right shit about progressing black people, then motherfucker, I'm with you. Name one crackhead you done follow. Bro, look, I use that as an example. Some if somebody I know a lot of crackheads. I'm about I, to say me they too. Speak some real I'm not shit. about to put nobody I don't shit out them there. But this is the thing. Once somebody says, I don't go I don't, I don't care if it's your mechanic. If it's your fucking, if it's somebody you fucking serving. Mm -hmm. and, and trust me, I've been down that road. Mm -hmm. I've talked to, I've had some real conversations with people that does, that did some undesirable shit. Mm -hmm. But that don't mean what the fuck they fucking feel ain't relevant to, to our cause. Not, might not be your individual cause, but that, how many, all right. Uh, this is my question before I even say something. Before I, I get finished, I should say. Because I want Bianca to weigh in too. How many people can come to you and and like take the conversation above just you and them? It don't have to fucking just pertain to you and them. When people start talking about a whole race for some reason, even though it's our race, when people start talking about the betterment or, or some type of idea that they have that can move us all as a people, all of a sudden they weird. It's like all of a sudden, it's like, nigga, it's only me and you. We sitting there smoking weed. Why the fuck are you talking about millions of people? It's like that seems foreign and weird to people when you bring it to them. It's like as long as that happens, there's... We gonna always be in the same spot. Like people complain about the spot we're in, but when somebody comes to you, start talking that. Well, to me, it's not unrealistic. But when people start speaking like unrealistically, and I gotta put the air quotations up, then all of a sudden these people are weird. Now, all of a sudden, you ever had those people come to you, whether you smoke a weed or having a drink, however you communicate, however you communicate with people, y'all could be talking, playing dominoes, whatever the fuck. It's like, and now all of a sudden you like shit. All right, this nigga about to leave in about five minutes. I ain't got to worry about that bullshit no more. You can how take that bullshit somewhere how, else. How, how much Those people say? are the people you should be listening to. I'm saying, how much, how much did she say that she she wanted? Because this is where the, it's, it's from the Netflix deal. This is what we're talking about, right? I don't really. That's where it started. No, nah, it, it was before the Netflix. No, I came out with the Netflix. That was before the Netflix deal. That was, that was when she felt like she was wrong on projects with Oprah, Tyler Perry, and Lee Daniels. Yeah, I remember that. But I'm saying that was the, one of the, the movies. Boycott. I can't remember the movie. But yeah, but the boycott. Still, she mentioned the boycott when it came to Netflix. Right. She was pissed before Netflix. I right. think it was almost Christmas. Yeah, yeah. it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. she had her call, but nobody paid attention. Right. Nobody yeah, paid attention until big. she started talking that's, about yeah. the Netflix shit. Yeah, yeah. It got big when she got so, and Netflix. that's just what I'm saying. <laughs> but, but, but that's actually my point. Like the Netflix deal, or nobody was paying attention to her before. The yeah, Netflix. nobody paid attention to that before. She had to mention Netflix about. and the deal, and then people start actually paying attention. So they her, still didn't gravitate towards her and say, okay, you know what? I can get behind this. But that was when people started paying attention to what the fuck net, to what the fuck Monique was ranting about. So what was she ranting about? She was ranting about how she was getting blackballed out of Hollywood. Yeah. She was ranting about how, like, she was, they were trying to un underpay her. Yeah. And she was ranting about the Netflix deal and how she was worth more than what Netflix was trying to give her, right? She was basically ranting about the, um, the things that they said someone... Some of them, and like I said, I can be open even when I'm debating. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that were in her contract, she didn't do. But some of the thing, but a lot of the things that they wanted her to do that weren't in her contract, they felt like she should have done anyway, and she felt like she was wronged. Mm -hmm. So, 
basically, she chose, and and I'm not saying that Monique is 100 percent right. I still don't. We can read all the fuck we want. We weren't there. We weren't in those meeting rooms. We weren't in those boardrooms. But the topic of our conversation was Steve Harvey arguing with her and basically said the words like money over integrity. He said that? I don't you got to watch it, I bro. watched it. I don't remember He told that. her we playing the money game. I remember him saying that. You, he told her you have to fucking put those feelings that you have aside in order to make the money. Mm-hmm. And then there were, um, there were things, there were old Steve Harvey clips from old stand-up shows that he's done. Mm-hmm. And he was like, and this is when he was broke. Like, nigga. I'll play the monkey for one million dollars. He kept going up. For five million dollars, I do this. For ten million dollars, I do this. And he's done him. I th- I personally think, and maybe because I'm light skin, I don't know. I know dark skin people. I'm not sacrificing my integrity for no money. Now, I, now I'm gonna say this. I think we all sacrifice some shit for the money. That may be time. Give us some example. That may be family. Nah, that may be integrity. That may be anything. Now, what you choose to sacrifice, whatever, for fame or for money, that's your decision. And I feel like if Steve Harvey wanted, if, you know, like his integrity is not that big of a deal to where he you can't. You not condone that I shit. know. I'm not condoning it. I'm saying <laughs> I can understand because what if, what, what if, like you said, you work like 12-hour shifts like all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what if I'm you, right? Or what if I'm looking at you and I'm looking like, and you had kids and shit like that. And I'm looking mm-hmm. like, nigga, how can you sacrifice your kids' time? Like, that's some bullshit. Like, I understand you need the money, but mm-hmm. your kids don't ever fucking see you. And I'm just as adamant as you are about that shit, right? Mm-hmm. But you looking at me like, nigga, I got to make the money. Yeah. Like, my kids ain't going to have no household for me to even fucking be in if I don't make the money. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I got to sacrifice being with you motherfuckers, right? Yep. And I think that's the same thing where Steve Harvey is saying is like, damn, I had to sacrifice a little bit of me to make it here, but now I'm here to where I can dictate where the fuck I want to go or what I want to do. And I think that's what he was trying to get Monique to be. But I understand, though, like some stuff you're not going to be able to sacrifice, and that's one of the things she's not going to be able to sacrifice yeah. to move on. And I And I get it. But I think Steve Harvey was saying like, Look at me. I'm in this successful position because I played the game. Mm-hmm. And if you play the game too, you can be where I'm at. Or, mm-hmm. or it, but it could be plenty of people who didn't have to play the game who are in su- a successful. Yeah, positions. but you hear more people that had to play the game. But, but like Terry Crews, like he had got he had got his dick grabbed by a nigga. I mean, by a grown man. He couldn't even say nothing because he was so worried about him not fucking making it. But this is but this is my uh, but this is that, that, that's listen, what I'm saying. that proves my point. You're lucky to be out of concern. That was a fucked up point. This is, this <laughs> no, I'm I'm saying I'm saying like she was saying I'm like, not letting my dick get grabbed to feed my family. Listen, listen. Okay. Not so, by no nigga. Listen. Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> you oh, crazy? Oh, I got a I got a good point. I got a good point. And it's 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 kind of crazy about this point. My family going to starve cuz nigga I'm gonna be in jail. Hold on. You basically said you made a post, right? Telling mm-hmm. women, and, and I'm going to tie it in, telling women to shoot their shot, right? Right. Because if not, if you don't speak up, how would a person ever fucking know? Wow. You're going to use my words against me. How would a person ever fucking know? So if somebody doesn't speak up about some wrong fucking shit to the public, how the fuck would something change? Exactly. You basically fucking said that. So if you tell the person, play the game, play the game, play the game, and women playing the game, playing the game, playing the game, not saying nothing like normally what you're supposed to do, you tell people, no, I'll change that shit. Turn shit around. Do something different. She's doing something different. And it doesn't fucking matter how many people follow her or how many people like, she doesn't have to be the spokesperson for shit. She could be the person who comes out and, and someone else who sees it, who could be the spokesperson to change that shit and be like, this is what she meant. I'm going to, I'm going to help y'all understand what the fuck she meant. Cause she may not be explaining it to the point that you get it, but let me help you so you can fucking get it. Somebody has to fucking do it. It can't be. It can't be just people chucking and uh, chucking and jiving and shit. So that way you can get your money. If that's what you choose to do, cool. Get your get your money. Chase the bag. Do what you do. But there's a lot of motherfuckers who's not with that. And why can't they have a person stand up and say, "I'm not fucking with that." I lose. I lose. I'm about I to say one of the things because we gotta. I'm trying to squeeze in hella shit in this 15 minutes. So I want opinions on all of them. It's okay. I lost. 
I, and I and I admit I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. So that's why I like to listen. I don't like to just go at <laughs> niggas' necks because if they don't get their point across and I'm going at their neck and then they make their point, <laughs> I'm fucked up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I fucked up. Exactly. And this was the I point I was trying up. to make. All right, we're gonna add this in. Ti recently dropped the song "Fuck Nigga" this on motherfucking fucker. Floyd Mayweather. Uh huh. And I got to say this, and I'm gonna keep opinions quick because I want a few like people see nigga we rocking out. We ain't just on the comedic shit. We on some real shit. Uh-huh. Floyd Mayweather, worth between $700 and $900 million. I've been trying to Google his net worth. There's no fucking definite answer. But the nigga's rich as fuck. Right. And when the boycott came and people said, okay, boycott Gucci, do this and do that. Floyd Mayweather made it a point to come out. And don't get me wrong, I made a post about this. I never looked at Floyd Mayweather like he was some type of freedom fighter. I never fucking looked at Mayweather like he said, okay, this is for my people. Some people are fucking selfish with their money. Some mm-hmm. people are so fucking broke. That all they got is money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because if you look at it, you could live in a big house. You could drive the best fucking car. But when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, you living in the house, you driving a fucking car. It don't matter how big my shit is. True. don't matter how big the fucking car I'm driving. Nigga, it's just some material bullshit. If you're not in it to motherfucking change and help your motherfucking people, this is the thing, and I got maybe 30 seconds on this. This is the thing. I, I, I sat out at work thinking. Like, I was like, what if I was a hundred and maybe five-year-old person? You know how they be showing these black people? The oldest person on earth. Like, the way we think now, and I'm one of those people that I think that now, like, and, I, you know, of course, I wasn't born in 1916 or something like that, 1919. Close. <laughs> <laughs> Close. But had I been, I would have been one of those people, like, going up with, going up what you see, like, poor... I can't wait until my people get in a fucking position of power. All of this shit gonna change. Wait till niggas get 500, 600, 700 million. All of this shit gonna change. Then you get niggas that get 500, 600, 900, a billion dollars. And they don't give a fuck about you and your broke ass struggle. It's like, dude, this shit is weird. If I had 900 million dollars every fucking day, like, don't get me wrong, I got family, I got things that I love, that I want to do. But, nigga, I got 365 days a year, 200 of them. I'm going to be trying to help my people. I'm going to be trying to, okay, nigga, this is what we struggling with. Nigga, I might, sh- I already got a, a million dollars worth of Gucci in the crib. I throw this shit away. I'll go fucking bury this shit. I'll go do whatever the fuck you want to the show. Like, look, nigga, I'm with y'all. Mm-hmm. Like, how y'all feel about that? How y'all feel about Floyd Mayweather, like, I mean, Floyd Mayweather, like, basically, like, nigga, fuck the black struggle. I'm, and you saw the video, I'm going into Gucci. <laughs> nigga, fuck with, I'm going into Gucci. I didn't even watch the video. You bitch ass nigga. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even watch the video. Well, you know, it's, it's, this is the thing, like, I don't, Floyd Mayweather doing whatever the fuck he want to do doesn't bother me. It bothers people. Because we want to be angry at something or somebody. And he wants us to feed into whatever he's doing, right? Mm-hmm. I don't even give a fuck. Like, let this let this motherfucker do whatever he want to do. Because this nigga ain't giving me no money or nothing, right? Mm-hmm. I really don't care. But I can understand why people are mad. Because he's, he's it's pretty much he's on the other side against us, right? Mm-hmm. But the reason why I don't care is because I don't have any Gucci. I never was a Gucci person. <laughs> and just like we was angry about H&M. Right, mm-hmm. we anger about Gucci now, right? Which mm-hmm. I understand. Like we, just, the people that go to Gucci and they treat you like this, you don't need to fucking go there no more. H and M, people treat you like this. How they, how they, how they got us looking? I can understand. You know what I mean? I can understand why we should be mad and why we should go against it, right? Mm-hmm. But motherfuckers that high up there that don't fuck with us, mm-hmm. let them not fuck with us. Because mm-hmm. there's other people that's high up there that's gonna fuck with us, yeah. and that's the deal. Like. We we feeding so much into what Floyd is doing that we're not even looking at the people that could help us. You know what I mean? Like that's who the people we need to Strangely, look at. Strangely, I kind of get what you say. If we too. ignore, there are Floyd, a lot of people who do. Right? If we ignore Floyd, he will be irrelevant. Right. If we ignore him, but we don't ignore him, and we feed into the bullshit. Yeah, because we're living in. Dude, trust me, we are living in a. That's um, the best the thing. Big, to do. Look, the rich people, what they're doing, their lifestyles is different from ours. 
Of course. Hella different. But we're still so fascinated by them. Not everybody can just ignore. Like, you might not give a fuck about what the nigga doing, mm-hmm. but you don't watch it. You don't look and see what this nigga doing because that's the age we live in. I wish we would. Boy, man, we haven't got a video. I looked at it. Look, trust me, I looked at it. <laughs> but I'm still like, this nigga's a bitch ass nigga. I looked at the mm-hmm. shit. I, I was one of those views, probably a few of them, because, you know, more than one source put the video up. But that's the thing. The I watched it, nigga, but I'm still like, you're a fucking bitch ass nigga. All right, Bianca, how you feel about that? Now, what were you about to say? I don't know. I was, I was just going to just reiterate what I was already saying. But <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Floyd. That's all yeah, I was trying to do a rush through so we can get these few in before we end the show. I read okay. a, a post that said Gucci is not the problem. The problem is our need to feel validated by wearing Gucci. And I was like, that's That's damn. dope. That's dope and deep. That, that yeah, is, but that should be the general consensus. I agree with that. But But the thing Gucci, is. Gucci, Louis Vuitton, it don't matter who the fuck. Why are you spending all this money with these white people? They spend no money with us. But the thing is, is that I, I, the reason why I see that is because we may not buy Gucci, but we buy sh- other shit that maybe makes us feel like we need the validation. And mm. these, these companies have done nothing for our people. Mm. And they will do nothing. Like, just because somebody doesn't say that shit to, around you or mm. it don't come out, I mean, they don't feel that way about you. Like, you can look up companies and what they've done. You know, for for people, because let's just be honest. A lot of this shit is coming from minorities. A lot of a lot of rich people will buy some of that shit, but mm. nine times out of ten, and I'll say rich white people. How many times have you seen just a rich, stupid, rich ass white person? Mm. Because we think celebrities, known people, are rich. No, no, people who are super duper fucking wealthy are not even fucking known. You would walk by them and be like, I don't even know who the fuck that is, and they own about eighty yep. companies and yep. shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. And you see these people. They ain't got on Gucci. They and, be having on regular and shit. And you see them, they got some regular <laughs> fucking new balances and shit. The $39. So you just think like, we need this shit to be like, ah, look at me. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Maybe I, I, about the Floyd shit, do I feel like that's sad? Yeah, that's sad. But I also feel like you have to have that in you beforehand to even feel that way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You have to give a fuck about your people beforehand before. Like, you ain't just going to get some money and be like, ah, let me uplift my people. You know what I mean? Right. You could be broke and say, let me find out a fucking way to uplift my people. And then when you get the money, you're going to do more. Yeah. But if you don't already have that shit in you, you ain't going to give a fuck. You like, this is my money. We think Floyd got money. He do got money. But the people who above him got fucking money. If Floyd, if Floyd, if Floyd right now turns it around mm-hmm. and says, fuck Gucci, will we follow him? I think, I think his followers <laughs> would. No, seriously, I do. I think his followers. I'm talking about us in his room. Will we follow him to say what? Like if he's standing up for us, will we follow him? If he, if he said, fuck Gucci, I'm with y'all, let's, let's, let's fuck Gucci. Would he you would. follow him? I mean, of course I would follow him because I don't buy Gucci anyway. I, I don't think. But I'm saying if you did. Yeah, you will follow him now. After, of course, after he decided to, at first, after he said, "If I was a Gucci buying person, and let me put this in first, like if I was a Gucci buying person, and those incidents happen, I would stop fucking with it anyway." But the celebrity endorsement does make me feel better because it, it makes me feel like the people who have more money than me, the power, the people who have the power, and the people people are looking up to. And then he said, "Fuck him too." Then I feel like no. I'm it's saying a, at first he said, "Fuck y'all," and now he's saying, "Fuck uh, them." No, nah, I don't. I would. Why? If it was, I you. would forgive him. If but it, it was like I'm already wouldn't. doing it now. You uh, wouldn't. I'm gonna tell you why. Tell me why. If it was genuine, because I, I've said this on on this podcast before. I believe that some people. Some people have the knowledge to be like, nah, this shit's this shit's fucking dead wrong. Us in this room. Like we not I'm not with it. And some people need to get that and it's sad that they do, but they just do. 
need to get that education fucking lesson. Like, listen, obviously you ain't fucking understanding what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Let me help you fucking understand what the fuck is going on. We have to do that with, with our people all the time. This generation is going to fucking need that. We had grandparents to tell us this is what the fuck it is. They mm-hmm. didn't have grandparents like that to tell them, like, the real what's going on. They just yeah. saw their mama. They but, didn't see. But he's a grown-ass man, right? But at the same time, yeah. And, and, and it's crazy. But he's not a smart-ass grown like, man. Like, even with T.I. Like, we all going with T.I. Like, let me throw this in since you brought this in about Mayweather. Even T.I., we all praising him for saying the fuck nigga song. But let me tell you how I felt when T.I. made the post so-called going in on Gucci. Like, I spent $150,000, $200,000 with y'all a year. So I'm even against T.I. Like, why y'all giving Gucci the money? What the fuck does Gucci... Bro, Gucci ain't shit. Why do niggas have to buy in the raggedy-ass brands to feel like that they... I'm not saying that T.I. felt like he was something about buying it because he's a rich nigga. But fuck Gucci. You wouldn't catch me with 9 million, 10 million, 20 million, whatever the fuck you got. I don't need Gucci to feel validated by walking in a fucking room with Gucci shit on. Maybe if I was 20 million right. strong, I'd walk in that motherfucker with fucking a white t shirt and whatever the fuck I got. That's me. Not saying, I mean, of course he bought it because he wanted that shit, but I'm saying we forgave T. Nigga, we riding with T.I. Nigga, you motherfucking just said that, nigga, he said he spent 100, 200,000 a year. How long T.I. been rich? So he probably got $2 million over that shit. But we riding with him, so of mean, course we'll forgive people. But but uh, I mean, you ask what we because forgive. Many I, I mean, times, you ask what we ride Floyd right, right. with Floyd Mayweather if he said, "Okay, now I'm against it." Right. We rode with Ti, and he said he now against. It. He said he just admitted that he got a couple million dollars worth of this shit. Right. Many times on this show, both of you said you wouldn't forgive a person because what they originally said is who they originally are. So apologizing afterwards and going against right. what you had originally said negates the fact of saying you don't forgive Floyd Mayweather. And I also because tell, and I also tell you what we said on this show too. What we said is it's different when you just apologizing to get that off your back. That's what and, I but that's what but, I came but to. But no, you but with. what I'm saying is if he did I, I said that play the last show do the fucking work if you feel some some type of way you get that education like whether you grown or not because there's a lot of fucking grown people who do dumb shit let's act like let's not act like we don't overnight know. Are, we, are we like no, why this no, is going not, on and this is what i'm saying because it's going to be irrelevant after a while and this right? is what i know right Ron? This, this is a trend the gucci situation yes but there's That's what more, i'm saying but there's more to come there is more to come this is not this is not just a. this is not just oh gucci said that like other shit is going to pop as it does every fucking day when it comes to racism, whether it be clothes and in, in any situation. Shit is going to come out. It happens. It's the Internet. What I'm saying is I don't feel like if you apologize and you just like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, that's 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 it. That's all you got. Like mm-hmm. nothing else. You have to actually do the fucking work. There were certain things that I thought and I really had to sit down and do the work thinking about other people. Like, damn, maybe the way I was thinking was real fucked up. And you're right. That's not overnight. That shit does not happen overnight. Yeah. But to say to say that you can't, it, to say that a person can say something or do something and, and, then, and never change is fucking wrong because some people do. Yeah. But, again, you have to fucking do the work. If Floyd did the work, not just I got fucking money. I got money. I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing that. Like. No, then, then if you just apologize and so black people could could like you again, the yeah. fuck no. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like right after, I'm talking about like right now. If he would just like fuck Gucci because all the pressure, right? He could be like fuck Gucci. Like I'm with y'all. I made a mistake. I'm fucking. I'm not spending another money with Gucci. I'm taking all my shit back. Well, I mean, it would seem a little fake. Don't get me wrong. That's it would seem a little fake. But nigga, if you finally getting your fucking and if it's genuine, if you finally getting yourself around and saying, okay, fuck these motherfuckers ain't doing shit for us. How would we then know? Then I would. Because right, we don't even know that nigga. All right, let me put we you. Don't all, right, right, <laughs> your mouth is, all right, let me put up a couple of points. I shared a video of a brother. I think it was from Detroit. I could be wrong. I shared a video, and. It's a viral video, a couple million views. He basically barbecued the Gucci shit he had. Showed the receipts. It was like a couple thousand, twenty five hundred dollars worth of Gucci shit. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the black people were in the comments like, "Okay, he's just doing this for attention." Mm-hmm. Okay, he he don't really, you know, what I mean, he like why put it on video? Mm-hmm. And I came in like, okay, that's just like saying, okay, why record an inspirational speech? Just keep that shit to yourself. It's like he burned the shit to make a point. And if more people did that shit, 
it would motherfucking become a thing. People say, okay, I'm not going to get rid of my shit or I'm not going to fucking say anything about this shit because black people are trendy. And if I did that shit, then they would just be right back to it. But if everybody keeps thinking like that, if everybody thinks that every fucking thing that we do is just going to fizzle out in a month, it will. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Like, when the fuck are we going to all say, okay, this is the thing that we're going to stick to and fucking f- finalize this shit? Like, dude, we tired of bullshit. Like, if every time something happens, we fucking, you got people to say, I'm not going to do it because motherfuckers not going to stick to it. Then you know what? Motherfuckers are never going to stick to it. Question. If Nike, if it came out with documentation, real life shit, that Nike said, admitted that they raised their prices in urban neighborhoods for their shoes more than they do in suburban neighborhoods because they know that minorities are going to spend their money on their shoes regardless on how much, how much they are. Basically saying you dumb niggas going to buy our shit regardless. Yeah. Would you still buy Nike? I would still buy Nike. I wouldn't. Like you just talking about a business. Ooh, like if if it's a business, if we talking about money, we just talking about like if I'm a business, mm. I'm gonna do what it's called geographics. I'm gonna do what makes sense. Like I'm gonna upcharge here. I, like for instance, like if you go to Beverly Hills for a fucking T-shirt for the same T-shirt that's down there at JC Penney's, mm-hmm. you gonna pay extra over there, right? Mm-hmm. As as you wouldn't pay extra over here. Mm-hmm. Like if everybody knows black people love Jordans, mm-hmm. like that's one of the top selling things with black people, right? Mm-hmm. We gonna buy fucking Jordans. So why wouldn't I sell Jordan two hundred and seventy five dollars there, and then probably in a I don't know in a market that doesn't really buy Jordans, I would sell them for two twenty there. Okay, okay, out of geographics, whatever. Oh, no, I'm about to say I'm gonna wait what on that, her. Okay, yeah, out of geographics, whatever. Well, let me. You talking, talking about just Cause, pure cause racism? You, you come, yeah, because you, uh, you, you, you switched it point. up like <laughs> like we got. I, I like was just got, about to say like I'm eating in Beverly Trump. Hills. I paid fifty dollars for a meal. They're not just catering to black people. It's because you're in Beverly Hills. I know, but I'm saying like if you but if, if you, you in the if, hood, <laughs> if you know specifically that they're targeting black people for higher prices on shoes, then I'm not buying them. If I go to Beverly Hills, I know that a, a twenty dollar meal here will cost sixty dollars here, and it's not chicken, right? It no, it's just food, and, and they're catering to everybody. That's business. When you start talking about people throwing in the black demographic to keep them where they are, then that's different. You adding race to I it. Can, I can look at it from both ways, but I'm gonna look at it. If I I'm, don't feel if a fifteen dollars salad is racist against black people because right. white people are in there eating them too. Right. But if you fucking put two hundred dollars Jordans on fucking Quindaro, right. And put seventy five dollars Georgia Overland Park. That's fucking. That's yeah, based on black people. My from my example, just my example. Oh, okay. My example is straight racism. My okay. example is on this document. It says that we know black people are going to spend more for our shoes than anybody else. So we are going to, we are going to increase the price for these shoes. But going here, like. Point blank period. Point out like racism. If they, if they, if they're like if they're like if you're t- saying blunt racism, like nigga, we are gonna keep these niggas where they at, so we are gonna charge extra. Basically, okay, then this, I can understand this, that. This yeah, then the, no, yeah. I wouldn't buy it. But it has to. But you know, it has to be something. It's not gonna be that <laughs> in the fucking document. It's but gonna be cute. I am also one of those people that don't buy high end shit. Like I don't buy Jordans. If I like something, I'm gonna but like I'm it and Nike buy period. it. Period. I'm saying Nike. Period. Yeah. We all buy Nike. I mean, then no, I will have to. I will have to decline Nike. Like, like right. McDonald's too. And I would applaud like, you for that. Yeah, but if if I'm and I'm being strategic and I'm like saying I know fucking black people is gonna buy more Jordans here than they will buy over there, then then people will buy over there. Then I can see why because they do that with cell phones. Like, Man, if you go I just to one think se- people have to have it in them in them beforehand because yes, like I got on Nikes right now, but I swear to God, I bought these Nikes like three years ago. You know the time I I asked me the last time I bought some shoes. Period. That's what I'm saying. It's like three right. years ago. I done bought some old navies. Like but the pants know. I got on. Like I mean, so, I, let's just say I was looking for a girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's just say I'm out here and I'm in the club and I got on these jeans I got now. Like these are like twenty dollar, twenty five dollar jeans. Yeah. Like I I'm not one of those dudes. Like yeah, I want to yeah. live good in my home. I want to fucking be financially secure, but. 
I don't give a fuck about impressing the next person with some type of brand. But a, lo- yeah, a, lo- a logo is anything. A logo is anything. Whether it be, it could be old, it could be new. That's why they do logos the way that they do. Because it, it just, even in marketing, it tells you, it attracts the mind. And it could it just inspire somebody to say. This motherfucker even got no logo. <laughs> I'm talking about your Nikes. I'm talking about your Vans. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it, could, it just, like the cars we drive. Somebody see that, see the logo, like, mm, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm. I didn't think about even if it's just one person. Like I didn't think about that. Let me, yeah, let me go here and look. Or that right. looks nice. Let me just go in here and look. Yeah, that's what logos are for. Logos are to be like, hey, buy this, buy this, buy that. Yeah, but by now we should know that the swoosh ain't for us. The swoosh is cool, right? It looks nice, but eventually, it, and the reason I'll say this, and we don't have much time left, I will say this. Yeah. I still want everybody's opinion. We, like, I shared some shit. And my homeboy, uh, uh, Lavelle Caldwell, he did his roaster thing. But I know when we talk to each other. He, you know, he agrees. It's like if you were to share something on your Facebook page and was like, you know what, hey, support black-owned business mm-hmm. instead of buying this shirt or these shoes or that tux or whatever the fuck you in the market for, mm-hmm. support this. It's like people <laughs> look at that. It was like not saying we brainwash but it's like we're so used to saying okay this is the thing if i want a tux is this brand if i want some shoes is this brand if i want a shirt is this brand Mm -hmm. and i think that's what keeps us from being economically empowered because if you try to interject with a black owned company it could be the same type of shit but nick and and like i told cortez i said i don't want to get too deep but like motherfucker said i don't want that shit look like some knockoff motherfucking (laughs) <laughs> Air Maxis. Mm-hmm. And I told him, like, bro, black people are the most knocked off motherfuckers on this fucking world. I mean, on this earth. We don't know where the fuck that Nike, we don't know where the fuck that design came from. But we look at Nike and we're like, shh, nah, they couldn't have knocked it off. They came with that shit that first. True. Nigga, it could have been some Air Africans way before that. But That's we're not going to research that. Right. We're going to buy them, nigga. That shit knocked off. I'm going to get these Maxis. And that's where the fuck we're going to continue to fall. But you I, just said, oh, go ahead. I think I I hate to say it, but just like stereotypes, you know, I'm not not it will yeah, stereotypes with like women versus men and shit like that. Like women can't be hoes, but niggas can be hoes. You know, shit like that, right? Fuck that shit. Oh, now you're going into a no to a whole nother shit. <laughs> live your life, girl. Live your life. But I'm saying, like, you know how that shit go, right? So when we talk about like logos, mm-hmm. it's kind of the same thing. Like just like when we was talking about with the uh what was it? The champion shirts? Yeah. Remember we were talking about that? How like they was cheap at first, but mm-hmm. now they, they cost a little bit more bread. Mm-hmm. So now in our minds, we like, well, anything that costs a little bit more bread got to be a little bit better than the cheap shit, right? Yeah. And that's the fucked up way of thinking, but I don't know how we're going to ever get past that. Celebrity, listen, you just said it. You said you would feel more, you would feel better, like proud if it was a celebrity that was like, you know, like speaking out and doing shit. Mm-hmm. Let's just be honest. Some people are people to say, I'm a rock this period. And I don't need nobody to wear the shit mm-hmm. to make me want to rock it. Everybody is not like that. And whether right. anybody agrees or disagrees, like you shouldn't be point blank period. It is what it is. Everybody's not like that. Some people need that extra boost to say, Hey, especially in this generation, yeah, they need the extra boost. So if you were to see somebody just like champion, it took a superstar to wear champion again to make it big again. Mm-hmm. If you got a superstar to say, I don't even know this person, but I'm going to wear this shit. I, I know plenty of them that do. That'll be on their IG page like they got they got somebody and it's black owned. It's a business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and they make you be like, oh, I want to I want to buy this. If you mm-hmm. have more celebrities to do that. Yeah. Is that is that one fashion over? Is that owned by a black person? I think it is, but I'm not sure. So don't let me. If that, I mean, but if that is true, like mm-hmm. I can see. What you're saying? No, he's not. Fashion. Though, I research. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I was I'll about to say, I, I thought it was, Dang. but but point blank, period. There are people who, whether we see them or not, in certain areas that that rock their clothes, their local clothes, because it's a black owned business. Mm-hmm. So I think if you had people to do that, to be like, hey, this shit is nice and it's black owned, then you would get more people to say, hey, let me check that out, let me look at that, because that's just what type of of world we live in. That is what is going to change because we do that with other shit. We see somebody rocking something, we like, damn, that look good. We see somebody driving something, we like, damn, that looks good. Because honestly, let's just say. 
the person makes the shit look good and it makes you want to fucking get it. That's mm. why they hire models. That's why they hire people to do certain shit because they know, damn, I want to look like that. That looks good. Mm-hmm. So if you have more people to push that shit, the only thing about celebrities pushing more shit, the shit's going to get expensive. Mm-hmm. Champion. You get more people to push that shit, the shit is going to get expensive. So a shirt, that, a sweatshirt that you would have got for forty dollars, you're gonna spend eighty for that bitch. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But if, but if black owned companies did that shit, if they like, look, we understand seriously, we understand our economics. Yeah. Don't be stupid. Let 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 people support you, but don't be dumb at the same time either. Mm-hmm. It understandably you have to buy more to supply more, but don't be don't be crazy. Like it yeah. it, it takes more than just. You know, like you have to work together. You have to understand that we're let us support you, but also understand, damn, you know, niggas is struggling. Niggas exactly. Is struggling. Right. And that's the reason why I said we need to support black owned companies because like he, he brought up Fast Nova. Fast Nova got the Fast Nova uh the regular line, the Fast Nova men's line. Mm-hmm. Don't think it's coincidence that they got a lot of they got artists like Cardi B. And they get the influential artists to get up on there and say, when you go on Instagram, you see them hashtags, fast and over this, fast and over that. They get everybody that we fuck with mm-hmm. to fucking say, okay, buy this. But when you look at the fucking owner, that's the owner. Have a look at him. <laughs> that's crazy. He, he, he not us. And I thought that was a black guy. How much, <laughs> no. we, how much we pay for <laughs> You know what I mean? And even if they go with a cheaper price and say, okay, but still, we're going to become the hot brand. We're gonna, we still going to make a billion dollars. It don't matter if the outfits cost 60 or 600 mm-hmm. Like, when you come to brands like Gucci, when you come to shoes like $875 and shit like that, like, mm-hmm. once you become rich, once you become a billionaire, whether you got $10 billion or $100 billion, it don't fucking matter. You're set for life, and, and you your marketing plan has succeeded because we will. We see a face. If I see Bianca Brown face on Fashion Nova, and I'm going to go get it. Mm-hmm. But we got to research further. You know what? I say that we need to take the first leap before we get out of here. Not today, of course. But I say that we should find a black-owned company, whether it be clothing or whatever, mm-hmm. and we should just just boost it. Yep, we I should agree. just get it out there, at least do it once a week, and actually purchase something, not just, you know, not just say it. I think we should actually purchase something because how can we speak on it mm-hmm. if we're not doing it too? Right. So I think it would be pretty dope. I know I know a couple that I want to grab some sweatshirts from. Mm-hmm. So I think it'd be pretty dope if we if we did if we did that, like join in on the movement. And one of the things before we get out of here, I gotta say this, and I'm old. I remember this shit. I can remember, like you remember when the trends were like we always bring this up and joking. You remember uh, the cross colors and the used jeans and and the bitch. I want it back. I'm old enough to remember when motherfuckers was wearing the fucking string with the fucking Africa thing on the fucking top. But that's what I grew up on. You know what I mean? I remember motherfuckers wearing the Africa medallion on their chest. You know what I mean? Not saying that white people didn't put that in front of you. Like, we don't know. We didn't research the fucking owners of the shit. We didn't research who was putting this out, even though that was bootlegged in every city in America. Like, who knows? Like, black people probably were profiting off of this shit. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, there was a time to where the people we looked up to weren't wearing Louis Vuitton and Gucci and all this shit. All this shit happened later. And the crazy, most fucked up part is we saw that shit on a black artist who we looked up to. Mm-hmm. We didn't see it on a white person. Mm-hmm. You ain't seen shit on a white person that you wanted to rock. Right. You saw it on a black person. And until that fucking type of um, influence changes, mm-hmm. things are still the same. I ain't never seen, and I'm not being racist, but I've never seen a white person rocking some shit. I said, I got to go get that. Mm-hmm. It's always our people. And until we turn down those endorsement deals, like you got the ten million, but what you don't realize you've done is you've influenced ten million people to say, "Okay, I'm going to support them," mm-hmm. and it wasn't our people. Bring cross colors back. <laughs> <laughs> we out of here, dude. Peace.